Hello, everybody, and welcome to the deepest dive on Resident Evil 4's remake from MinMax. MinMax is a place about games, friends, and getting better. Thank you for being here. We're so glad you found us. My name is Ben Hansen, and I'm joined by Jeff Marchiafava. That's me. I'm joined by Kyle Hilliard. Uh, hello, hello. I was looking up merchant quotes to try to get like a good merchant quote to start with. But who can remember? Who can remember what that guy says? It's he's such a wide vocabulary. We're Not enough cash, stranger. Hey, also joined by Sarah Podzorski. Hello. Hello. Uh, I am so excited for this big game, big crew. Um, let's just let's do a little table setting. Um, Amuse bouche. That's Spanish, mm -hmm. right? Okay, little table setting for where we're all at with this thing. Uh, Resident Evil 4, played it in 2005, loved it in 2005, put a gun to my head, you put a red nine to my head, I'd probably say, I don't think I beat it twice. I think maybe like one and a half times played through it and said, what a great game. And now fast forward to 2023 and I feel like you're a fake ass Resident Evil 4 fan unless you've finished it like 16 times. So I'm self-conscious about how much I remember uh, and I'm struggling to piece everything together because I thought I remembered a lot, but there's already a lot of stuff in this uh, that I'm surprised by. But uh, Jeff, um, real quick, what's your Resident Evil 4 experience? Um, I know that I have played the opening part with the chainsaw. Wow, okay. And then, and then after that, I was already running into things that I was like, did I only play the opening part with the chainsaw? Ooh. I I remember well, okay. very little else. Now here's the quick question to interrupt you. Like the chainsaw demo that released recently for the remake, there was a demo exactly structured like that for GameCube. Do you think that's what you played? Did you get no, one of those demos? I didn't discs? I didn't have a GameCube, so this was this was years later that okay. I would have because yeah. I, I don't know when it happened. So you don't think you've beat Resident Evil 4? No, ab Perfect. absolutely not. I it's, love having you here. I love having yeah. you here. Uh, we're also joined by Kyle Hilliard, who has played this game probably the most out of any of us. Guaranteed the most. Yeah, you think so? Probably? Yeah. Because yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. what are you at? I haven't like beaten... I, I will say I, I've probably played it a decent amount on almost every major platform, but I don't, didn't beat it every time, right? Uh, okay, that's interesting. So, like I interesting. beat it maybe once or twice on GameCube, and then I probably played like 70% of the Wii version, and then I played like... 40% of the Xbox 360 okay, version. Okay, interesting. And then most recently when it came out on... Well not, I bought it on Switch when it was on sale. And that was one of those instances where I was like, oh, I'm going to play this for fun. I'll play the first hour. And then I ended up beating it because it was just like, this is so good. It's so fun. I'm, it's great to have on Switch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, here's the hallmark for if you're a real fan. You seem like the type of freak, the type of nasty weirdo that bought this on iOS. Probably. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think gotcha. I did buy it. Yeah, I could, I could even check my purchases. If we Pin them up, really folks. Specific. We got them. Uh, we also got Sarah Pazorski. Uh, Sarah, you you are fresh to this thing. You just yes. streamed all of the Wii version. It feels like yesterday. It was apparently about five months ago. Wow. I played Resident Evil 4 on the Wii, which I truly believe is the ideal Resident Evil 4 experience oh, with the Wii mode. Interesting, interesting. We'll unpack all this stuff. So uh, whenever you. we're in it's doubt... It's blurry, but uh, yep, 2010, September 24th, I have a, a log of Resident Evil 4, which I can no longer download, but it, I do have a record of purchasing Hell yeah, it. a day that'll live in infamy. So Sarah, whenever we're in doubt, we're going to bug you because you've played it the most recently. So for all I comparisons... I do have a pretty good memory yes. of it. Okay. I will say. Awesome. Great. Uh, in case you were curious about what this is, this is a game club about Resident Evil 4 remake. This is, without a doubt, the best, most thorough discussion about Resident Evil 4's remake on the internet. We are breaking this game up into three chunks. This discussion is covering everything in the game from chapters one through six. So finishing chapter six, that is what's happening in this discussion. Uh, here's a heads up for folks as well. Roughly, it's a Twitter poll, but we'll trust it with our lives. 16% uh, of people, 16, have never played Resident Evil 4 before that are playing this. So no spoilers, please, beyond Chapter 6, especially you, Jeffem. I see you I was wanting to say to about twenty-five percent of this very cast. I would that's say. right. That's right. So no spoiling anything beyond that. Even in the comments and stuff like that. Let's keep this a fun way for folks to unpack everything. We're going to be back the following two weeks. 
uh, for the next discussion. So next time we're talking about chapters 7 through 11 for The Deepest Dive. And then after that, chapters 12 through the ending of this whole freaking thing. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you. Uh, we're an independent games media company here at MinMax. You could really uh, change our entire lives. Maybe that's a bit much. You could change the trajectory of our entire organization if you just did a little thing, if you just hit subscribe on YouTube. It's a little thing for you. It's a genuinely huge thing for us. And if you really want to help us out directly, you can go to patreon.com slash minmax with two N's. If you enjoy the Deepest Dive format, if you're glad people are giving this game the discussion it deserves compared to most other coverage of the game out there on the internet, or if you want to unlock the podcast version of all of these discussions and ad-free early access to the MinMax Show podcast and a ton more, and our Deepest Dive on Dead Space, uh, Deepest Dive on like a dragon Ishin that's going on right now, patreon.com slash midmax with two ends, jump in at that $5 tier. Or if you just want to jump in at that $2 tier, help support the Deepest Dive format, you can also submit comments for us to read over on Patreon for the upcoming sections, because this game's a lot more fun when you're unpacking it with the community, both on this show and in the MinMax Discord. So if you enjoy the format, please help support the format. Um, we have... So many questions and comments that people submitted over there on Patreon. It's really wonderful. We changed up how we're accepting comments not too long ago, Kyle, for uh, the Like a Dragon Asian Deepest Dive, where it's now just like a collective Google Doc. But I think it works pretty mm. well. And I thought, like a naive beast, I thought we wouldn't be able to do our favorite game, which is Most Common Comment to figure out what people are commenting about the most. But it turns out some topics are just so red hot that people, even when they can see everybody else's comments, are still just submitting the same thing over and over and over again because they're so eager to talk about it. So what do you think was the most common comment about Resident Evil 4 Remake chapters 1 through 6, Kyle? Um, Leon's personality, his tone, his one-liners, who he is as a person. Who he is on the compared inside. Compared to 2 Remake and also compared to the original version of 4. Okay, love it. Jeff, what do you think? The doggo. Doggo. Interesting. Sarah? How did they make Leon Kennedy so hot? <laughs> <laughs> are people are people into Leon Kennedy? <laughs> to be fair, Sarah no. Sarah entered that no comment a hundred times on the document. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. Do you think Sarah? Busy. Do you think because I feel like he looked better in four, like the original. Now he's got the kind of like the the funky chin that I. I will say I'm out. not looking at his chin right. to be honest. Um, I will say they made his shirt a little bit looser at the bottom. Mm. Which I don't really appreciate in the like original. It was like tucked in more of like an Under Armour. It's a little right. bit looser, but um, no, I think he's absolutely still. He's incredibly attractive in this game. S Sarah, I am. Yeah. I'm delighted that you lead with this because genuinely, I swear to God, I was finishing chapter six today and I had a thought yeah. just again on that Kyle train of thought of thinking about Leon's personality and just <laughs> what a freak goofball he is. And I was thinking like, surely... I would have seen it if anybody on the internet was thirsty for Leon, right? Like, I just, I have never encountered that in my life. And it's just, is it a matter of me not following the right people on Twitter or checking out the right subreddits? But you think this, this is a big part of the internet is red hot on Leon? It's a, it's a big part on my internet. Okay. My okay. current TikTok is just like hundreds of edits of the Leon Kennedy chain scene. <laughs> Which, honest to God, had me acting up with a little with, bit. With Louise? With yeah. Louise. Okay. That was like the most attractive thing I think I've seen in a video game in a very long time. Now, we, I didn't know what they were saying. <laughs> I was just losing my mind. Right. So we can, at any point, anybody can tap out of this conversation at any point. Is it like a bondage? I'm not saying with you in particular. I'm saying in general, no, no, the no, internet no, no. liking it. It's, like just, it's the female gaze, right? Because right. Leon, like, he grabs that chain and he wraps it around his arm. Uh-huh. So you can, like, see the outline of his arm and then he pins it under his knee. So he's like, right. the sexiest thing I've ever seen. Really? I was like, and then he's <laughs> like, when he tells Ashley, he's like, jump, I'll catch you. I was like, I don't care how high the building is. If Leon Kennedy was down there and he was like, jump, I'll catch you, I'm there. And then silently put you down. A lot of people, by the way, demanding that you trust them in this game without any mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sort of pride. <laughs> Luis is like, trust me. I'm, I, I know what I'm doing. And Leon's like, trust me, Ashley. And it's like, 
I mean, you're two very handsome men, so I guess that's all it takes. <laughs> I mean, even yeah. like God of War Ragnarok fell into that trap a lot of like, oh, something big's going on. You're going to have to trust me. It's just, it's a nice way to save a lot of writing on the developer's part, I feel like. I'm just like, oh, no, yeah. no, just, let's I just think ahead. it's all Aladdin references, personally. That's right. When he bumped mm. the apple on his shoulder, I thought that was a bit much. Um, okay, as Steve Bellegarde says, hey, I got to say it. Leon's fashion is a big step down from the original. The fur line coat doesn't look nearly as cool as the 2005 version. The tactical undershirt looks like something you would grab off the rack at a department store, and I will be dying on this hill. <laughs> That's fair. The shirt is like, like I said before, a lot looser at the bottom right. than it used to be. It like looks like he had like a men's tall or something. Yeah, it looks great. Like you know, abs up probably, but then once it gets to, it gets all like bunchy, and it's like, what happened? Yeah, what are we doing? Mess. Tuck your shirt in, uh, Ryan. By the way, all these all these comments come from Patreon, so thanks to everybody who submitted a, a comment over there. And by the way, at some point during this discussion, I promise you, I promise you, viewer, you will say, "What? Why aren't they bringing this up? What's the matter with them?" The reason we're not bringing it up is because no one submitted a comment about it. Uh, so if we have a gap. You can fill it on the next episode of The Deepest Dive. We promise. Jump in there and support us. Leave a comment and we'll fill anything that we miss in. Uh, Ryan says, hey, no comments on the game, uh, but can we talk about how off model the figurine of Leon looks that came with the collector's edition of the game? It makes me so sad. It's a little rough. It's a little rough. Uh, Capcom sent us uh, one of those collector's edition. I like open it up all excited like a kid with a toy then I see Leon's face like oh okay well you know everyone's it looks trying. like the after like at the very end of the game someone like took a photo of Leon after he's gone through hell <laughs> and they were like put that on the little figure <laughs> that'll do uh hey did I say the most common comment no was no. it is it he's hot <laughs> no there were zero comments about that uh there's just one thing his fashion's like uh no most common comment uh the parry system with the knife everybody's uh -huh. got a hot take on that parry mm. system with the knife it's truly all over the place um boy there's a thousand places we can start we can try and move chronologically but just before we dive into the super specific stuff jeff since you're kind of the freshest to this what do you think about the first six chapters so far um uh, it, it was great. I mean, what was that? I feel, I feel like, um, I feel like Capcom gets a lot of praise for their, for their remakes, but still not enough as in oh. terms of just overall quality and, and updating a game to the point where I, you know, I, I played through those six chapters. It did not feel like I was playing an almost 20 year old game. And I think right. part of that is just kind of the core original design. But certainly, the um, the amount that they update these games when they make them, and yet still manage to put like put one out every year, you know, or or pretty close to it, it as opposed to like taking ten years for a Final Fantasy remake, which we'll see if we ever see the other one. But I I'm just so appreciative that. Capcom has figured out this formula, and yeah. they continue to deliver on it. Yeah, I mean, it, Giant Bomb was talking about this recently on the Bombcast, but I think it's true that I don't think there's any other publisher that's taking as good care of a legacy franchise as Capcom is Resident Evil. It's like alternating between solid new entries and just amazing remakes. I know people yeah. quibble about 3. I'll, I'll go to the mat. Resident Evil 3 remake is still a very good game to play. Yeah, I understand it's not the quality bar that 2 is, but that game's still fun as hell. Like, it's just unbelievable the amount of work that they're pouring into this thing. Yeah, it it really feels like they're sparing no expense. Yeah. And and I and a lot of the times you it's very evident when developers do spare the expense um on some on some remakes. And so each one I mean, obviously I haven't I haven't I didn't play the original, so it's easy for me to say that it feels like a new game, but it certainly feels like a modern game having not played much of the the original. Yeah, I mean, the big thing I think that stands out during this chunk that just doesn't feel modern is it, it is that tone, I guess. It is just, it feels like such a wacky madhouse. Like, this, I forgot how funny Resident Evil 4 is. Like, it has made me laugh so many times. It just feels like a surreal nightmare, and Leon is a deranged weirdo. And, like, that... It, they could have, like, you know, you hear the stories Mikami recently said in an interview that he only had three weeks to write the entire story for Resident Evil 4. And it's like, boy, it kind of shows. As much as we love Resident Evil 4, it kind of shows. And then with the remake, it's like, there's a lot of amazing areas that they updated 
storytelling, I feel like, is damn close to that original. And it's amazing that they didn't really try to pack in new layers of emotion so far, at least. Right. I mean, my thing with Resident Evil, like the series broadly, is always like, you. I really can't defend the story, right? Like, I can't really even define a lot of its characters, you know, and tell you the characteristics about them. Yeah. But I find them almost all undeniably engaging like they're very good at making me want to see what's going on what's going to happen next and like keeping me in the moment right. uh, like i oh, it's rare that i start a resident evil game and i don't finish it because it's just like they're really good at just making crazy stuff happen and it's like i i can't help but enjoy it yeah so even if you're kind of scoffing saying this is so dumb maybe with like resident evil 6 or something yeah. you're still like well i want to see though what's and there's it's very easy to bounce off a game for being dumb but when it's dumb and also just alluring enough that's something special that only resident evil can do yeah um stark writes in and says it's interesting to me to see how precious ea motive was about remaking dead space compared to how capcom appears to be more liberal in their creative choices around resident evil 4 remake and sometimes getting the impression that this development team does not revere the original Resident Evil 4 to quite the same extent that I do, which is totally okay. New changes like the knife parries and stealth kills are well ex executed, but a lot of these additions take away from some of the qualities that still make the original so unique. It's still a blast to play through, though. Uh, that's interesting, kind of on the flip side, saying they're they're changing too much, maybe? Or God. Well... As I've... someone who just played the original, I'll be honest, like, I played the original five months ago, it's not as precious as I think people think yes. it is with the nostalgia yes. glasses on. Yep. Um, there's like a lot of, you know, issues with it. Like you can't move and shoot at the same time. Um, it's like the I camera's all over the place. I would argue that's not an issue. <laughs> that was I would an argue issue. the game is well designed around Leon not being able to shoot. And but move still for time. going back to it, it does. I think, I, honestly, I bet, pff, let me just throw out a number. That no I think maybe it's with. more of just, I guess, I guess it's like, it's a silly argument to bring up, but the, sort of the contemporary, you're used to it, right? It's like playing a game with two analog sticks. If you go back and play a game that doesn't have that option, it feels weird because you've gotten so used to it. But the thing that I'm saying is Resident Evil 4 is fully designed around the idea of Leon having to put his feet down and characters running up to you and then stopping and creeping up to you. Right. Like that's just how the AI works. And I think it's really well designed, but it does the the ultimate point of like it feels weird every other game i play i can move at the same time i i get that and i would i would go so far as to say i i would bet a majority of people who played resident Evil 4 back in the day and haven't touched it since have the memory that you can move and shoot at the same time mm. misremember yeah, it because like yeah. oh it just it feels like that of course but it's like you go back to it, it's like oh, okay and that's kind of where that nostalgia goggles comes through i think a little bit um, Hayden B writes in and says the game is basically a new Resident Evil that uses the essence of Resident Evil 4. It's crazy how you walk into a new area and know exactly what area it's the replacement for from the original game, but the geometry and the map layout is completely different. It is a magic trick, says Hayden. Yeah, I, there was definitely a lot of situations of like, is this in the original? I'm trying to remember what is there and what isn't. Even just like the Luis in a body bag, little stuff like that. We're like, I don't think... Can I, can I ask a big one, actually, for, yeah. with Sarah's good memory here? Yeah. In, could you ride the boat around the lake in the original? You could ride the boat across the lake to get to the merchant. And that was, it was very, very minimal. It was just a, but was in it a this one, scene? No, you could drive it. You could drive it. Okay. So you could, you could drive you it could around, freely but like, you could just zip. Yeah, you would literally just zip across the lake back to the merchant dock. But in this one, you get to use the boat a lot more. Wait okay. a minute. That's, I think it's very cool. That's what I, I thought. I was like, I don't remember driving a boat around this It was much. a very short, like, you just went straight, and okay. that was it. Wait, wait, wait. Gotcha. But just going straight, I mean, is it like a cutscene, or you actually have free control? It's just more uh, or less I'm pretty sure I drove that boat. Okay. Okay. And then I just went like, I, mean, I was like, let me the drive the boat. Bike. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um... Let's see. So many great comments to get through. Uh, are we all playing on standard difficulty? I thought it was interesting that the way they pitch it is like, oh, if you've played RE4 before, you should play hardcore. And it's like, well, wait right? a minute. I don't know. I was like, oh. hold on. They were like, yeah, if you've played RE4, like you should play on the hardest mode. But if you haven't played it, you should play on standard. And I was like, who do you No. Who do you think I am? Well, you want to be cool or not? I don't know. Uh I, I went down to assisted mode. Whoa, I, whoa, I, whoa. This is no, the deepest you're not dive, shame me. man. I'm enjoying it, and and I have no qualms about it. The, this, the scary things uh, are still scary. I'm, I'm getting exactly what I want out of survival horror without um, beating my head against a wall in certain parts when it's like ambush city, and I don't mm -hmm. know where I am. 
I I changed it after after that first after the after the first chainsaw guy. Really? I died three or four times, and I was like, I have a day to play through this. Basically, uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep. And and honestly, like that that section really feels like you need to know what you're doing in it, which mm-hmm. which I. Mm-hmm. I I had some I had you know seen some videos and and had some recollection of like I need to get to a certain house I didn't know which one but I had to get to a house and I had to get upstairs in order to get a shotgun from that house to even feel like I had a chance I'm sure I could have gotten used to it but I'm I'm still dying enough and it's it's really I think it it mostly has just alleviated some of the like being super super scarce on ammo and i'm totally okay with that i i have never enjoyed that of the resident evil games yeah um i'm not going to learn to enjoy it it's <laughs> that's that's not why i play horror games to begin with i like i like the jump scares and feeling the tension and that's enough for me jeff um, yeah i will say that first section was I had a, I struggled with it when i first played the resident evil 4 like i really struggled with it but because i knew what to do once you all of Resident Evil games are just like you find a circle and you run in that circle. <laughs> like for all these sort of like mob things, right. you find a circle, you just do laps and like you take them out one by one or you like run out the timer or whatever. But yeah, I even in this one, it's like very unclear, very unclear. Like you show up, there's a man on fire and you're like, and I'm supposed to do what? Like I'm here. I'm what am I going to say hello to people? I yeah, guess. yeah. I re- I remembered I had to beat the chainsaw guy, but I st- I still also did not remember how that ends, and so I was just like blowing through all my ammo, Oof. and guys kept on coming, and mm-hmm. I fell off a roof at one point, and it's it's very entertaining and you know exciting and tension filled, but I ju- I get those same emotions playing on the easier on the easier mode, which yeah, you know, normally it's, it's I- still. Normally, I'm 100% with you, Jeff. Um, I, for this one, it it kind of, I don't know. I feel like you can do it. And I think dying and getting to know the environments, I feel like this game is I'm, worthy of it. But I'm, I'm, I'm sh- checking that instinct within myself as I say it. But- you you should you should check it because I, I don't <laughs> feel like I'm not learning. Like, I have been all over the map about five times. Um, yeah. I cleared okay. everything out. I okay. got most of the treasures before I... Uh, you know, before I got to the end of this oh, segment, I I don't. I've had a couple people. I don't think I'm missing money anything after bridges collapse and they oh. just can't go back there. My so thirty pesetas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, McDude yeah. submits a comment over on Patreon to say the first village chainsaw man fight becomes a lot less stressful when you understand that you can just run around and wait out the timer. I really That's enjoyed what I did. I don't think I saw the chainsaw man once. I was just like. <laughs> He's having fun somewhere, I'm sure. Um, really enjoyed watching Chainsaw Man cut down his pals, though. I didn't grab the shotgun until the second time visiting the village square. Whoopsies, says McDude. Oh, whoopsies. Oh, that, yeah. yeah, that's handy. I, I, I make didn't it really hard. I didn't grab the shotgun yeah. until my second time through the village. Uh, what are you guys doing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the beginning memorized. I missed it, I guess. Um, Yaro. Where were you going, bingo? <laughs> <laughs> Man, obviously, iconic line. Just... <laughs> immaculate writing overall and i just uh, want to say like oh. yeah. going back to the beginning of the game yeah they made leon kennedy such a polite young man right because they kind of show his you know they show a little bit of like resident evil 2 about what happened to him in his very bad terrible first day <laughs> and then he is he's more reluctant in this game to right. go on this mission yeah in the first one he was like badass like american man like eagle scraw like he was coming in to go break down doors and find baby eagle. But in this one, he seems a lot more like iffy on it. He well, seems I, a little I more like beaten down a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's it is admittedly a stretch, but I actually really like that in the opening cutscene. They're like Leon. Leon's got some PTSD, and the only way he can't like the only way he can even like concentrate is to just sort of crack wise and be a little. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got to make these jokes or else he's going to lose his mind. And it's like, Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you for contextualizing it a little bit because in the past it was weird to go from two to four and Leon's like, Mm -hmm. oh, he's like... He's a super soldier now, I guess. He's, like, he's Tom Cruise? I don't know. It's, just, it's, it's always a thing of like, every time he says one of his one-liners, 
It says, who is it for? Like, I love it. It's part yeah, of the Resident Evil 4 for charm at this I'll point. I'll let myself out, jumps out the window. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or like, you know, right at the end when he kills the, the boss in chapter six, and what does he say? He's like, tell your God I said hi. It's like, what a weird line. He just, he, I can only reframe it as that his his brain is completely broken after the events of Resident Evil 2. He does not know what <laughs> yeah, is happening. Yeah, and I do, do not blame him for that. Which, but frankly, also, it should be. I mean, if we're being honest. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But also, he like, just the beginning cutscene, I remember that was like the craziest thing in Resident Evil 4. The original, he like knocks on the door and the man is just like chopping wood and he turns. Right. And Leon Kennedy just like, he speaks Spanish and Leon Kennedy immediately blasts him in the head. <laughs> That's right. Like the first game he walks in, knock, knock, knock. He doesn't even knock. He just busts in. <laughs> right, And the right. guy's by his fireplace and the guy's like, says something in Spanish. And Leon, immediately they're like, here's how you shoot a man. Yeah. <laughs> and so in this weird. game, Leon like, knock, 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 like, Excuse me, have you seen the police? Like, and he speaks Spanish now. Yep. And he didn't immediately gun down the villager until he was attacked. Like, it's. I really like how they like shifted it a little bit because that was it was hilarious. But I, I for one, love polite, well mannered Leon Kennedy. That's right. He's a better man. Yeah. Lenya Tasso wrote in about that same thing. It's nice to see Leon at least try to speak Spanish. But it's yep. like it's very basic of like, oh, vivo aquí. But it's like to the level, like, he can probably understand most of the things that these Ganado are saying to him, right? Like, he should try talking a little bit. But by the way, this is another thing that has made me laugh in this chunk of the game. It's just like, I don't know if they've added any voice lines to the villagers. They're treating like the Spanish lines that they say of just like, the trust, a imbecile. They have like their four lines or whatever. But it's like, I really thought for the remake they would go all out, but... Maybe it's just like, well, they're iconic. They're iconic lines. So even if they're repeating them all the time, it just becomes like Star Fox, zip, zip, it, zip, zip it. Like he, they have to say the lines no matter what. Well, but they did it with the merchant, right? Where they gave him a lot right. more dialogue. And it does make it stupid exciting when he's like, what are you selling? You're like, oh, he said the, the thing. The line. It's he's, like, I would love that from the villagers so too. Why now? not? Yeah. yeah the really merchant's like so place. chatty. And it, like in the original, I had this headcanon that like, he he was just like my only friend in the world right. and in this game it actually kind of feels like he's my only friend like he gets excited to see me i'm excited to see him it's like good vibes all around i, w I wish they'd become better friends like right when i see him for the first time merchant's like hey over here stranger and then leon just says to himself who is that it's like That's, first of all just go talk to him you weirdo and then there's no like wait, w what is going on with these people what is happening? Who are you? Is there anything I can do to help? Anything? It's just immediately like, I don't know, I'll just buy some guns and I won't try to yeah, unpack said, the situation. Yeah, kill some rats for me, please. <laughs> right. Bring back three snakes. I'll give you a <laughs> discount. Hang on. Is the implication that the merchant's the one writing all of those requests for like, won't somebody rid me of these meddlesome blue so, metals? He's the one you get the, he you can oh. spend the little gems on. I, but I think there is... They do have, like, little notes about, like, from such and such. I don't think, like, he okay. is... Someone hired the merchant to get these things done, right? But that's <laughs> so the, now the merchant, <laughs> he's the middleman between whoever needs these things completed, I guess. Who are they? Who's hiring the merchant? Who else is roaming around? Is it the Ganados that are sick of medallions? I don't know, but I spend a lot of money, so, like, clearly it's lucrative. Right. It works. It works. Uh, Reed writes in, they say, I'm enjoying the insane goofiness of the merchant building a pirate-themed shooting gallery and creating the charms to dispense from the gotcha vending machine. I got a charm of an enemy with a shield that I haven't encountered yet, so it seemed like kind of a spoiler. I also got a fish charm that fully heals me when eating fish. What charms what? have you won? I, I gotta get that. That sounds amazing. Mine are like, you know, 15% more bullets or something like that. I don't know. They're, they're pretty lame. I, I got one that um, is you get 40% more for selling ammo to the merchant. Ooh, which interesting. Which is good because I, because I have more ammo. Um, so I, mm. I, will, I will craft a bunch of submachine gun bullets because they give me the best return on my investment <laughs> and then I'll sell them. But I, I still, I haven't, um, I haven't been selling the treasures that I get. And I guess I should, do, I should be doing that as we go along. Um, is that if it well, says I, like some will say like you can only sell this, which I really appreciate because in the first yeah. game it didn't tell you that. Right. But in this game it will literally say like meant for sale. But then I there's mean, other the, ones that you want to put the gems in. Yeah. yeah. You definitely want to do that. The the very first time I played Resident Evil 4, because it was a Resident Evil game, 
I was like, oh, these are clearly for puzzles. Right. Everything. Right. All the gems, mm. every collectible I picked up, I was like, I need to save this for the eventual puzzle. And it wasn't until like the last two or three hours of the game that I think I talked to a friend who was like, oh, no, that's that stuff's all you just sell that stuff. <laughs> and so like I like ended I was like struggling the whole game and then ended with like, you know, a rocket launcher and all this stuff like I had like a, so now I'm, I'm much more like I just sell it. I, I hang on to it for no particular reason, but then I'll sell it if I if I'm short on you, something I want to buy. I like the idea of your Leon just carrying around a big sack of crowns throughout <laughs> all of Spain, though. Uh, yeah. So every time you go to sell stuff and there's like a key at the top, that's also just game on. Go ahead and sell it, right? That just is their indication of like mm-hmm. this is this is fair game. Uh, yeah, Col- Colton W says, I'm happy to see that the treasure system and the mini puzzles to get them are still in the game. It's cool now there's a bit of strategy and how to put gems into the various items. Having one of each different color or all of one color makes the item sell for more. It's a neat inclusion that I think is new. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the different yeah, I believe so. for more money for, for the different things. That is just such a smart video game thing of like, hey, you can sell this stuff whenever you want, but if you finish this off, it's going to sell for more. Like, that's that's all you want. That's a little interesting decision there for you, said Meyer. Um, the, the shooting gallery is just like... That thing has cemented this idea that's a huge takeaway for me for this overall chunk of the game. It's just like, the environment art is so ridiculously impressive. Even, they went above and beyond in that first house that you walk into, but just like the amount of detail, just crumpled up bed sheets, things hanging on every wall... It is over the top. And even the shooting gallery, which what other game has an interesting looking shooting gallery? It's like that is just your chance to have uh, concrete walls if you're lucky. And this place having like the pirate theme and that amazing pirate all art all around the side. It's just like that Capcom I'd, environment team is killing it. I'd have to do the research, but I think it might also be the only like Resident Evil game to have food that actually looks appetizing in the shooting gallery. Oh, it's interesting. It's like a table of like, oh, this food actually looks fresh and is not moldy. And if you go and, you know, a talk, if you go try to check it, there isn't some comment that's like, ugh, disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Aaron T. writes in and says, does Resident Evil in the series hold the title for the most gross food in a video game? This stuff is everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, typically. Probably. It feels like they're kind of, I mean, it's not like in one and two and three, there's that much gross food that I can remember. But then four, it's like even that pot early on, it looks like there's chunks of hair in it. And then seven, it's just like, come to dinner, everybody. This is how mm-hmm. we're bringing you in the yeah. doors with the marketing of how gross this nasty food is. I mean, I think I started playing five on my Steam Deck recently just for fun. And I feel like even that in the beginning has a lot of stuff that you go check. And Chris is like, what is that? That's gross. You know? It's like, right. I guess this is a Resident Evil staple. <laughs> you need it. Um, hey, for people that are listening to this that have never played Resident Evil 4, I'm fascinated by you, and I want to worship you in a church. Um, Premise, just in case you're curious, sometimes it's nice to set the scene a little bit. The premise is this Leon Kennedy fella. uh, He was in Raccoon City. Um, That was nuked. He got out of there. He now was hired as an agent by the president to rescue the president's daughter, who is Mm -hmm. somewhere ambiguously in Europe, and he goes there with a couple police. The police are immediately mysteriously murdered, and there's a bunch mysteriously of villagers. Cool watch though. them both die. <laughs> what do you mean mysteriously? And then get eaten by a giant fish, I guess. Um, they also took the time to make them a little rude, so you don't feel too bad about them. Mm-hmm. Right, that's right. Um, and then this, I mean, for like story beats, this chunk of the game is basically he's trying to uncover what's going on in this village, why everybody's acting strange and trying to kill him. And there's uh, some guy named Luis, who he eventually also runs into, has some connection to Umbrella, who's also running around. And it's kind of a... Frenemy? Is that the right way to put Luis at this part of the game, Sarah? He's working with Ada Wong in some way, but he don't really know what's going on. Yeah, I would say, like, we're not sure if he's an ally or not entirely. Like, right. he helps us out when convenient. He's like, um, when it's convenient for him, he's like a fair weather fan That's of Leon right. Kennedy. That's right. He's mainly worried uh, I about... I trust him. He seems trustworthy to me. Seems great. He's mainly he worried about... He's said to him, trust you, so... Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's worried the about... The umbrella Amber. angle with him. I don't, is that? I feel like that's new, but maybe I... See, I don't, I don't remember. About I don't him. remember. So I'm going in... I'm going in basically fresh for a lot of these story beats. Also... Again, if, if you put a gun to my head and said, what's the deal with Ada Wong? I don't think I could tell you. It's always like, ah, she's just appropriate the... shoes. That's her whole deal. Ah, okay. She looks good and she shoots through windows and then zip lines away. And that's, uh, that's she's the... like a third party. Like you're the government and Ada Wong is capitalism, essentially. I see. So it's smart. So she's there because she's being paid to be there. 
you're there because you're unfortunately a government employee who's probably underpaid. Right. You have to be there. But he respects Certainly the understaffed. I, I like that they just send <laughs> one person to get the president's daughter back. Yeah, and then, he, and then he'll call in and they'll be yeah. like, uh, you know, the weather. I mean, we can't yeah, get the it's helicopter. A little, it's a little windy. Can, can you wait like 20 hours maybe? <laughs> I will say Hunnigan cares about you or like at least shows empathy to you a little bit more in this game than the previous game. In the previous mm. game, she was like, what do you want me to do about it? Like... Right. Get to work. Where's Baby Eagle? And in this game, she's like, I am like when you lose contact with her for a little bit, she's yeah. like genuinely very worried about you. And the other time, she's like, So do you got Baby Eagle? Yes or no? Right, right. Also, I'm going on break in 20 minutes, so <laughs> yeah, she basically disappears after the first what, like three or four hours of the original, I think, more or less. I, but uh, I do, she I do gives like you tutorials. I do love that her introduction takes the camera to her office wherever that yeah, is like you yeah. get to see her in wherever it is that she's working because in the past you would just it was just a facetime call totally and also you know there's a little more personality like uh she's like oh you gotta head to the church leon and then he comes back with one of this classic leon zingers he's like i'm a little due for confession and you get to see hunnigan kind of like shaking her head a little bit like she's a little charmed by how deranged and broken leon is uh but who who dares say this i'll tell you who's who dares to say it jeff um and that's not me uh, stalling for time. Instagram expert wrote in over on Patreon. They say, okay, why does Leon start this adventure with only 10 bullets? That is literally one magazine. If you're going to save the daughter of the president, you would bring along at least two more magazines. Am I right? <laughs> uh, Gavin Budget C. It's just not there. It's not there. It, this government these days. Uh, Gavin C. also wrote in just shocked by the 10 bullets one guy <laughs> move for the president's daughter. It's got to be under the radar because if... The Spanish president finds out that Leon's just murdering people here. It's going to be a real international crisis, I think. It's a good thing we don't know where it is in Europe. So it could be like... anywhere. It could be anywhere. Uh, Forrest with two R's writes in and says, What's the point of code names if they're going to be as glaringly obvious as Baby Eagle? <laughs> and then Interata says, I find it funny that Leon uses the code name to Hunnigan, but immediately reveals... Yeah, he says... Oh, no sign of the president's daughter, Baby Eagle, yet. It's like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> you idiot, shut up. But I guess it's like, how else would they get that exposition across? Yeah. Just a, a picture with him looking or like a campaign photo or something? I don't know. They're kind of screwed. They have to somehow get it across, but it's such a dopey name to hear over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, Roel writes in, they say, is the general tone of the game feeling a bit off to anyone else? In 2 and 3 Remake, I really liked how they went for a more serious approach, but in this one it feels like they're somehow trying to keep the more wacky feeling of the original, while at the same time they have the more serious tone of the other remakes. This just makes it not really click with me for some reason. Sarah, were you stretching or did you have hot thoughts on that? This is just what I don't get when people are like, why is this like, some people are like, I want my Resident 4 to be more serious, and I'm like, it's literally the president's daughter's been kidnapped by some wizards <laughs> for some <laughs> evil corporation. There's giants and mutant dogs, and like, wh what do you mean, Siri? Like, there's a man in a castle. <laughs> there's a man in a castle. Like, I'm sorry, this is the least serious Resident Evil game, and I love it for it. Like, that's what I love about it. I, I do yeah, think... You're kind of cornered a little bit, too, at least, you know, there was some grounding you could do, like, you're it was, you know what I mean? You weren't, like you said, you weren't fighting wizards in a European forest. Like, you were in a police station, you know, It's like Resident Evil D&D. &D. I do yeah. think, I, I don't think this is everybody, but I do think there's a certain amount of, a lot of people played this when they were really young. A lot of people wrote in talking about how they played this when they were like 12 or something. And, and so maybe people remember it being more serious, but there's no doubt that, I mean, the tone of two to three to four originally was a jump. And now with the remakes, playing them all, so close to back to back it it is striking and i say stupid with all affection in my heart but it's just striking how stupid this game is at times it's delightfully mm -hmm. silly um riku maru writes in and says i wanted to shout out my favorite line from leon right off the bat i'm sure you boys didn't come all the way out here to roast marshmallows maybe you did the cops reply you have a strange sense of humor i can't wait to hear the rest of the cheese they decided to keep or come up for with this incredible game you know one of my favorite like talking about favorite leon lines is when if you i guess maybe you could skip this but if you go to try to get in the boat without having the gas tank yeah 
he he all of a sudden goes full dad mode and he's mm-hmm. like you gotta fill up the tank when you're done <laughs> using this yeah, thing. that's <laughs> right that's right i did yeah i i think that that's the only line that i laughed and and but i don't know if, if that it was supposed to be intentional it's it's such an aside of just like this is common etiquette, guys. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> like the, it's like he's in this like horrible situation where he's like trying to cross a lake where we just saw a man get eaten by the Loch Ness monster, and he's like, "There's no gas in the tank," and it's like, Leon, we've got a few bigger issues here. I don't know. I do think it'd be lame if they spent more time with Leon being like, "What? What is happening? What are these monsters everywhere?" It's like mm-hmm. they don't really need it, yeah. but I think with a game with this level of fidelity. The fact that it doesn't really happen, it just it leads to this surreal tone that I didn't expect. You know, just well, mm-hmm. so much of the game is just him. Basically, it's uh, to call back to another deepest dive we did. It's the scene from the thing, you know, where the head starts crawling away with the crab, and and they say, "You've got to be effing kidding me." It's just that tone for everything he sees. But there's there's no like meltdown beyond that. It's just like. Phew. Now these guys, it's just that for like the first six chapters. It's so I weird. I like when he yeah. saw, you see like the giant hammer. Right. That the yes. giants use. And he's like, nobody can use a hammer that <laughs> big. And you're like, Leon, we just saw a giant skull <laughs> yes. in the church. Like, but he's like, he's too dumb or like to put two and two together that like maybe we should be more concerned about these things. Yeah. I just stared at a skull for a minute that was the size of a he's small like, car. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> he doesn't have to agonize over things constantly, mm-hmm. but it, but it's it's that extra step of like you're in this situation and you're going to stop to try and think of like a funny one-liner that you're saying to a mutant who's got a sack on his head and he's trying to <laughs> like who like, who is this for? Yeah, I think is yeah. Uh, came to that. Yeah, Chris Logan says the polished visuals and controls are great, but we're expected. The tone was always the biggest question to me. Would they be able to retain that cheese factor? But when Leon says, where's everyone going? Bingo. I knew that they nailed this remake. Uh, yeah, it's, I, it's, it's working for me. And I'm not even, yeah. I don't really yeah. like this sort of B movie thing, right? Like I, if I were to watch an action movie like this, I think I would get frustrated. hundred percent. And it's, it totally chalk it up to Resident Evil 4 nostalgia. Like I would happily accept that, but it's like, it is working for me. Absolutely. In the sense. Yeah. I wonder if it's working as well for new people. For that 16%, mm-hmm. I, I'm curious, write in and let me know if you think this tone is cool. <laughs> like, I guess all that matters is, is it fun? And Resident Evil 4 is nothing but fun. Uh, Jared Piers writes in and says, I'm disappointed that the first Ganado you find doesn't do the weird three-quarter turn, three-quarter right turn to face you when approaching him at the fireplace. I always thought that was an iconic bit. Yeah, and it kind of harkens back to Resident Evil 1's zombie turn in the hallway and whatnot, right? But... I think that's a tough thing about a game that is so iconic is everything's an iconic bit. You know, for me, the moment of like after you kill the first Ganado and then in the original, you go up to it and there's a little icon. It just says, it isn't a zombie. You're like, that wasn't a zombie. I always thought like, oh, that's such a cool little detail. And so I thought like, well, in the remake, surely they'll have that or they'll have Leon say it, but there's just nothing. So they have to get away from iconic stuff because everything's iconic, especially about the opening of this game, you know? Uh, but that uh, that house, like that jump scare, I wasn't jumping out of my seat, but I mean, that might be the scariest part so far of this entire section. It's just like that house and like just walking through the door and then the zombie, zombie, look at me go, please. Ganado. It's fine. You it can say zombie. zombie. It's certainly, gonna, but they didn't tell me it wasn't a zombie, so I don't know what to they believe They are what anymore. they are. That's right. Um, but you know, actually, like right there oh, I'm sorry. It. You go ahead, Ben, because I had another scary part I wanted to bring up. No, go for it, man. That's it. Just the, when you stand by the door. Okay, so after you beat the lake monster uh, and you go to find the place where you put the the, the skulls, right? Yeah. There's chanting mm-hmm. in those woods. And he turns a flashlight um, but on. There, yep. But there are no enemies. Yes. And that was actually like the moment probably like for the full game, at least at this point, where I was like, oh, this is genuinely creepy. Right. Because it's I think it was more the like fact classic that- horror. Yeah, I think it was the fact that it was more psychological and like you, I couldn't see where the chanting was coming from and it was like an early tease for enemies I, I know I'm probably going to see later, but like that part actually made me like uncomfortable in a way that I was surprised by. Yeah. There was a part um, after everyone goes to bingo where I was just <laughs> running around the the village and it seemed like everything was empty and, and they lulled yes. me into a false sense of security and then I went into one house and... 
And some guy jumped out of a cupboard, and I almost <laughs> had a heart attack because I was just not expecting anyone. Yeah. Um, and then there was another guy who jumped out of a toilet that scared in chapter See, that the one man. I knew about. Yeah. Yeah. That one I knew, yeah. and I was still scared. I, I was like, part. hey, is the guy still in the bathroom? Oh, oh my God, yes, he is. <laughs> I had to really inspect that bathroom and be like, okay, do they have running water in the village? I don't think so, but sometimes I'm confused about their technology or where they're at because there's a part in the village where you can like go into the well and there's just like a bunch of garbage everywhere. But then part of the garbage heap is just like a bunch of Amazon boxes. It's just like a bunch of cardboard boxes where I'm like, it's a really huh. weird touch. I wouldn't think that they'd have a bunch of cardboard boxes, but I'm sure for the artist, it's like, uh, what does garbage look like? Cardboard boxes? I don't know, but it's it, it's an odd choice. Well, you... The the big timestamp for me was finding Ashley's cell phone. Did you guys? Oh find my yes. gosh! I yes. loved that yeah. the razor Motorola yeah. razor cell phone. It has like this sticker for her sorority. It's like, do all sororities mm-hmm. have stickers? Yeah. Is that a common thing? I I was so I because I found it before I met her before I finally found her. So I was like, oh, you got to pick that up and give it to her. Yep. And then I did I did appreciate it just that. Puts Ashley- it back down. Yeah, he just throws Man's it back. like, that's oh, a razor just... phone. That's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> and But I think she says something like, oh, I just bought this, you know. Right, but I just, right. I don't know. I just like that time and place. It's cell phones have become for me like like pre-smartphones of just like once you have one of those in your media, it's like you know exactly what era you're in. You know? Totally. Like even watching this, we're not turning this into a spoiler cast about Succession, I promise. But even watching like season four, episode one of Succession, like seeing the phone they're using, it's like the iPhone with like, the three camera lenses and I was like wait in the timeline of this show how much time has passed would that version of the iPhone technically be out now but yeah uh, Sam L is totally with you Kyle they say this is my first time playing Resident Evil 4 and this remake feels so modern it wasn't until I found Ashley's fi- flip phone in the church that I remembered oh yeah the game came out in 2005 that's it yeah like that takes place in around then you know to mid 2000s right so. um, and that's the best phone the president's daughter could afford Um, Sean Mills writes in and says, this is my first time playing Resident Evil 4, and the thing I have been most struck by in the opening section is how much death oozes from the environment. Everywhere you go, there are dead animals or dead people littering the streets, reminding you of how bleak and depressing everything is. I jumped out of my chair when I opened a gate and a severed head fell behind me. I looked up and saw a row of heads on top of the gate. Death is everywhere around you in this game, says Sean. That is a good point. It, it, It really is especially in this remake, it feels like they've packed in even more skulls and corpses just everywhere. Um, yeah, great big great big piles of skulls just everywhere, which which always, it's like, what was the population of this town that they had <laughs> this many skulls? Even, yeah, I'm still confused about that of like, where do all these villagers live? There's like three houses in this entire <laughs> area. Uh, they're just camping out in canyon walls. Ge- genuinely, I think I think the thing maybe that we're supposed to take away from that is they're pulling people into the town. I don't so think they, it's the population because I I did I don't know if you guys found I found like a place by the lake where it was clear that like they had been killing young women for a while. Oh really? Like there were there were multiple young women. Like Ashley is like the third or fourth in a line of women around her age that they're trying to get. Oh, because yeah, the first shot of the game is like that cutscene of like another blonde woman being sacrificed. Yeah. And you can, and you can find a place where there, they had, there's, I mean, it's, it's dark, but it's like, there's one woman who was like tied up in a house and then you can go upstairs and there's like a, a like a place where they were doing some kind of ceremony. And there's another woman around Ashley's age, uh, laid really? down there. So I think, I really think that it's like they're, they're anyone who comes close to that village is getting murdered and sort of disappearing. And who can resist coming close to that village? It's, it's the place to be <laughs> beautiful. Um, beautiful. there was a journal um, where they were talking a lot about this Lord Sadler fella. Um, and, and the person wrote, no need, and they're talking about famine, <clears throat> how everybody in the village is suffering, yada, yada. And then they say, no need to cast lots today because they found the cops um, mm-hmm. and used the cops' bodies. Am I dumb? What, what does that mean? No need to cast lots. Were they, were they like sacrificing? I think they were sacrificing people, right? Because they're like, yeah. they were saying like they were sacrificing it to like appease basically I, I guess like a monster at this point you're not really sure what they're trying to appeasing but previously in the diary talks about how they're like six people today eight people today like they're literally taking people from the village and kind of like using them as fodder for i mean so trying to it'll be the, revealed well i know i know but we know saw now. but we saw the fish monster eat one it's not the fish monster well that's what they use one of the cops for so it's weird that they say we got that the cops. That was just to so. dispose of the body. They got a, they got a lot of giant things they need to feed. Okay, mm-hmm. there there but, were there were journals about the about the giant 
that you fight as well mm-hmm. about yeah. how it was eating all their cows and they were running out yes. of cattle to feed it and stuff. So, right. So I'm looking up cats takes a lot lots, of it. and this it's like a thing that they did in the past. It's like a a form of gambling or something. It yeah, I mean, it, it's, I don't know what this is. It's like drawing straws. It was like, yeah, it's yeah, it's like drawing straws. sticks, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. okay. I had no idea. Okay, cool. By the way, we should all get back to that. Like, Sarah, next time you come over for like a barbecue in her backyard, can we just like draw sticks? I think it'd be kind of Cast fun. Lots. What do we do with the person who gets the short stick? We let the fish eat them. Uh, Clay Carroll writes in and says, it only took the village fight for me to already feel like this is just Resident Evil 4. For the game to make that strong of an impact where I felt like I did back in 2005, I think is incredible and that they captured it perfectly. It had the same tension and panic of the original while adding in the perfect amount of modern slash new gameplay mechanics to make it feel natural and fun. Mm -hmm. And the game looks stunning to boot, says Clay. Um, I think the game looks good. Tell me if I'm being too critical. Please, internet, please yell at me. But there's a part of me that's like, I, I remember like RE2 and RE3 looking better. And I think it's just indoor environments by and large yeah. versus outdoor, like just wilderness I is hard. I think we get to the castle a little look, but it's incredibly brown. We're in like yeah. the brown section where like the villagers are brown, like they're all dirty, there's dirt everywhere, the houses are brown. Yeah. It, like it's dark, it's dingy. Yeah. I have an issue sometimes trying to figure out like where the villagers are when I'm like looking for them because they blend in so well. Right, mm. right. With Even, their surroundings. Yeah, I could see that. It's also, you know, the impact of 2 at the time was, and this, you know, we've seen this engine in these visuals before now, so maybe the, the bloom is off the rose a little bit. You know, I wonder if you put them side by side if you'd feel the same way. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but just, you know, little things like, I think maybe, and this is tough, especially in a post-Avatar way of water world, which we're all living in and thinking about every day. But like the the water physics specifically for like the the fight on the lake was one where I was like, eh, those waves are a little, little on the cheap end, but you know, who am I, who am I to judge? I don't know how to do it. Uh, Jeff, I can't do it. I can't make this game, man. Come on, man. No. Well, what's I, everyone I'm, playing on actually? Oh, sorry. Oh yeah. I'm playing on I'm, PS5. I'm playing on PS5 too. And I only have a 1080p. So it, a 1080p TV. So it looks great to me. I uh, can't wow. tell any difference between this and two or any of the other remakes. Uh, because there's no 4K in my house. Well, and, I, and there never will be. Okay, all that's, right. That's... <laughs> uh, wait, Kyle, you Xbox or? Well, I was going to go Xbox because I typically go Xbox in general. But um, the if, if the VR in the future, I don't want to lock myself out of that. So I went PS5. Oh, interesting. And then Sarah, you're all in on PC? Yeah, I'm on PC. It looks really good. But like the menus for like displays and graphics are so in the weeds for pc it's literally Mm. like a horror story in itself like i will (laughs) say like going to the menus and trying to like fudge the graphics it's like they're like leon's hair or like the bloom the rain like there's like 20 options yeah and some of it's just a bunch of words i don't know Kevin Cooper is asking, uh, time to address the true controversy of this remake. Hair strand setting on or off? I maxed it and my cutscene started to chug when like three characters were in there. It literally could not render all that hair. Oh, God, it's beautiful hair. Someone, I think mm-hmm. it was, uh, I was talking to Marcus, a game informer, and he pointed out, now I can't get out of my head, is like something about the way RE Engine does hair. You can just immediately tell it's like RE Engine. It's, I don't, something it's, about hair just hmm. feels like has felt slightly off even since Resident Evil 7. <laughs> Maybe it's just Leon's haircut's bad and we can't really tell the difference. It's not bad. Oh, I'm sorry. It's it hot. Looks, it's the hottest. Okay, with, if, you turn, if you turn it all the way up on all the strands, looks good. Right, right. Turn it into a strand game. a strand game, game you're saying? Kyle, same joke, boys. Um, I gotta say, in the settings, I don't think I'd ever seen this before, but I greatly appreciate it and I hope it's a new uh, default. Correct me if I'm wrong if you've seen it before, but uh, there is a, a wonderful setting in accessibility, and it just said, like, hey, do you get motion sickness easily? Like, uh, and you can just hit it, and it'll turn all the settings on to try and alleviate that, turn them on or off. Basically, it's just like a default template for, like, we'll try to help you not puke. And it, like, removes the, slows down the camera movement and camera blur, and then also, like, adds a little reticle, which I haven't gotten sick yet. Normally, first-person games make me sick, but it's like, I wonder how much just having that one little reticle on the screen a little white dot will help with that it's a weird thing Did it, it, um, it lets you change the field of view too which not mm. a ton of games do yeah um, console yeah yeah yeah. that's nice 
Is this one that made you sick in the like? Did the original make you sick? I don't think it did. I don't remember it making me sick. Chainsaw demo make you sick? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. I could I could try jumping back and forth here. Uh, Bread writes in and says, being able to actually feel the solid thud of Leon's goofy roundhouse kick is precisely why I love the DualSense haptic feedback feature so much. Is anyone else using them on PS5? Uh, I gotta say, I I don't mind the DualSense. I, I wish there was a setting to turn it off. I don't want to feel every footstep when he's running. <laughs> it's a mm. lot to feel in that DualSense. It's like, Sarah, do you have that? Is that PC or is that just a DualSense thing and they're upping that? No, for... I'm playing with keyboard and mouse Ooh. and it is incredible. And I think it's because I played on the Wii version to begin with. Right. But like, I feel unstoppable. Mm. I feel <laughs> like I have like an unfair advantage keyboard and mouse. Like, it, the game honestly feels easier. That's interesting. Than the original. But I did play with the Wiimote, so that's like already hard mode. Did you have Motion Plus? No. See, exactly. Like a schlub. Oh, oh so I think it, there's a console setting where you can turn all that down. I think I have it turned down pretty low. Oh, Like really? it's outside of the game. I want to so, feel it. I just don't want to feel every footstep like he's Astrobot or something, you know? It's, like, it's just a yeah. little much. I do like the, the PS5 controller does give you a light for his health, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't... I. I I don't like the 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 uh, triggers how they sort of lock in place. Like right. I, I liked it in Returnal because it was mechanically relevant, but here I, it doesn't really. I don't know. I, it makes my controller louder than it needs to be. It's it's why I kind of tend to go Xbox. Yeah, weird. Before. This is fun fact. This is the first uh, physical disc I've put in my PS5. <laughs> hey, we're so. physical disc. Hey. Boys, I guess. Oh my I God, know. we're same Drake boys and physical disc boys. <laughs> Uh, ENT Clark writes in with a very important question asking, can anyone explain what is going on with the chainsaw man's eyes? Looking at those huge round lidless spheres is the stuff of nightmares. Great question, ENT Clark. Well, I think the implication is that he took it. Can we also bring up like the weird, the the people with the animal heads? Because that wasn't in the (laughs) original and I don't really think we need them. Yeah, they added the weird bull boys. They just had so many bulls in town, they needed to do something. And everybody knows if you put a bull's head on top of your head, that it makes you like five times as strong <laughs> as anybody else. That is that is one of those enemies, uh, almost, this is a weird uh, one to point to, but the black head crabs in Half-Life 2, where it's like, if I see those, it's like every bit of my focus mm-hmm. goes towards those guys. Like right. shotgun, sniper, just like, I got to focus on this person <laughs> as much as I can. I like him, you know. Or bull. I, it might be. A, I got to focus on this bull. It might be a more bull than human. I don't know. That's yeah. It it wasn't clear though if they're just wearing the head of another animal on their head or if it's if that is their head. I do believe that in Game Informer's Rapid Fire, uh, was, was it Alex or Marcus? I forget who did it, but I believe Marcus, they asked. Yeah. And they said it was just wearing a head, so everyone can relax. Okay. It's just it's. What's the point of having worms in your skull if you can't wear other people's heads? So, yeah, so you think you should be like a, you should be able to just put a different I like different to think that it's like head. the tentacles that they just shoved in another head. Right. That <laughs> would be better. Up in there like that would be more mm-hmm. fun, yeah. I, I like those guys. I wish, there's a lot of them. I feel like if, if we got just half as many bullheads, they'd be a little more special, but. I really struggled during the, the house defense. Yeah. In the original, I didn't struggle as much, but this one, yeah. I was like, it, it took every single bit of me to get through that. What? Because yeah, I'm trying to remember it, what if there was like a bullman equivalent in the original no. house defense. So it was just a lot of people, and you said to deal with that. It was just like yeah, a mob. Right. Okay. Yeah that that was my question as well. Because after I got through the um, the village town sequence, you you go into that next area with a larger barn, and you run into that first pig head guy, yeah. and I. And then it's it's another like smaller ambush, but it's still an ambush. And I guess up until that point, my impression of this game was that um, the chainsaw opening part was was unique, and that it was yes. just like they throw you into this one big ambush, and it's like this amazing set piece, you know, thing that happens, and, and that's what everyone remembers for the game for. And I didn't. It it took me a while until I was a couple chapters in and until I realized like, no, this is happening a lot. Like, like mm-hmm. this is what's really interesting about this game is they will put you in an area and just kind of stream guys into it. And you just have, you have to deal with everyone, which is, a, which is another thing I'm not super used to in survival horror games of just how many people you're mowing down in these, uh, uh, in these sections, but it's, it's super tense and super fun. Yeah. 
Arlo G submits a comment over on Patreon saying, I haven't played any Resident Evil before, but after hearing Jacob Geller talk about Resident Evil 4 Remake on the Min Max show, I felt convinced to give it a go with this remake, and it is so much fun. Every time the game telegraphs a large combat encounter, I end up with a blend of fear and excitement that no other game has delivered for me before. Yeah, it does feel like, well, every chapter has to have something exciting, and so uh, what's it going to be this time around? When's it going to hit? It is funny when you walk into an area that's not a straight shot, you know, and mm-hmm. you're like, Okay, well, any minute now, because <laughs> there's a lot that are new, you know, that are, at least at least that I don't remember. Uh, and yeah, so I know exactly what they're talking about. Yeah, and, and that uh, the giant fight. As soon as I got there and I saw there was a giant gate, and, you know, and then it's a big open quarry. I, was, I told my wife, I was like, oh, God, they're going to ambush me. And I walked through it and I walked a little far and then I was like, just wait, they're going to drop the gate on the other side. And then I walked through the entire thing. I was like, huh. That was, that was weird. <laughs> so and it good. wasn't until I was coming back and I was like, oh, okay, here did, it is. Oh, so did you good. hear the growling though? Because like yeah, if you go yep. up to that gate, you hear it sort of like yeah. growling, which it's is very breathing cool. heavily. I, like that a lot. I knew it, I knew it was only a matter of time. I'm not as naive as Leon is with his big <laughs> hammer that he can't figure out. <laughs> yeah, that was a perfect instance and in, was it chapter four? Of like, okay, I know El Gigante, I know the fight is here, got it. But then like just running back from the lake, it was that perfect instance of like running into that arena and then being like, wait, is this the spot? And then da, 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 all the doors slam. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's right. God, this is so good. Uh, Yara writes in, though, going back in time, chapter one. <clears throat> they say, do you all know that if you shoot the church bell, you can skip the entire fight in the village and the cutscene plays? Oh, Although, oh that's cool. That'd be nice. But you need a long range weapon like the sniper to hit it. So you can't get it on a first playthrough. But apparently it's they say it's an awesome detail that Capcom added. I don't know if that means that's added fun. for the remake or what, but that's fantastic. Oh yeah, I think so. That that's like a thing that's like even though I you know wasn't planning to play it back to back, it would be fun to at least just go do that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Victor Fam writes in and says, "In the original, I climbed up the tower to get some supplies in that village fight, and I used the elevated position to get a breather from the horde below. Needless to say, that was not the case in the remake, and having that option taken away from me was a pleasant surprise to shake things up." Uh, yeah, now if you climb that tower, the floor falls out and you just immediately mm-hmm. go back I down to everybody like else. I feel like sometimes they take your memory of the game and they kind of turn it against you. Yep. Because most people go like, oh, I can get a, get up this tower and then you can kind of shoot the guys while they come up the ladders. And they were like, oh, you thought? You thought you thought you were safe here? You thought you could do that? Like, mm, surprise. Yep, it's it's a perfect example yeah. of like Resident Evil to Resident Evil GameCube remake, right? Of like, oh, the dogs aren't busting through the hallway now. Just the clacks, or the glass is just going to make a little cracking sound and that's it for now. But yeah, it's, it's diabolical. Yeah, which they also, I mean, they I guess it's different than your memory, but like they've taken special care to do that with Ashley as well. Like in the past, you would just like tell her to hide in a trash can and go clear everyone out and then t- then go get her mm-hmm. and like they've just totally removed that option like she has to be with you at some capacity now it, 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 there's like i was there was one when the two chainsaw women busted through there's a locker you could put her in but I, that, right. that was that when i saw that rare. i was like oh ashley will you respectfully get into this locker and she was like what no and i was like it used to be a trash can so <laughs> get your butt in there <laughs> Yeah, I, that that mechanism also doesn't work great for me because the button to call her out is pushing in on the right thumbstick. And I push in what? on the right thumbstick a lot, apparently, when I'm getting chased yep. by chainsaw women. Yep. Uh, I, so she was right was, down there oh. with us running around. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I, I we, always we make the through. mistake, too, of like I'm trying to sprint around and then just I hit that button or even like, you know, all we have is like what tight follow or loose follow. And so she's constantly just like, mm-hmm. OK, I'll stay back. Oh, I'll get closer. It's like, oh, crap. I keep hitting the wrong button here. If, yeah, if you do, well, I feel like, I don't know if it's on purpose or just me reading into it too much, but I feel like Ashley's performance, even sometimes when I accidentally go back and forth, I'm like, stay back. All right, actually come close. The, the, the line read is like, oh, okay. Right. You know, right, like she's almost right. like confused. I hope it's intentional because I like it if it is. Yeah. Uh, Andrew P says, at one point um, in the village fight, an enemy was staggered near a cow when I did the roundhouse kick and I knocked the cow out. I felt bad about it. Mm. But you shouldn't. I got, have the, you guys been attacked by the cows? Yeah, the bull went after yeah, me. Yeah, yes. that was the one that got mad at me. And that that was that was the one point where um, I had gone I had gone through. A, I think it's when you're going back through the village with Ashley, and and that was the one point that I almost lost because the cow hit her, and then she was in like her down state, and it was like if she gets hit again, she's gonna die, and you're gonna have to redo it. 
and the cow was just like stuck on her and constantly hitting yeah. into her. Oh, so I was God. like, I gotta kill this cow. And I started shooting it in the head with a pistol, but that wasn't doing it. So I had to pull out the shotgun and it took like four shotgun shells for me to <laughs> like just massacre this cow so it would stop running into her. I was you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't want to do this. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of me apologizing to animals. Like yeah. I'm like, please get out of the way. I'm, I'm tr- really trying to not shoot you, but there's a man with a cow head like right next to you. Please move. <laughs> Uh, well, now you know why he puts that cow head on, because thick hide on those suckers, man. Oh, right. uh, or to make me think he's a cow, so I won't kill him. That's right. Andrew Esquerdo uh, writes in and says, when you encounter that dead dog in a bear trap early on, I remember th- I thought, oh no, they killed the doggo that we used to get a chance to save. And I was so happy later on when we encounter the actual dog we get to save. And I loved when he made his Marvel-like entrance during the Elegante fight. Mm-hmm. Hopefully he makes the... 210's Best Doggo of the Year award. Yeah, we'll see. I, th- I thought it was interesting that in the marketing for this game, I don't know if it was like an IGN first ran this story that had like that shot of the dead dog and everyone just ran with like that idea of, well, the dog's dead in Resident Evil 4 <laughs> remake. It's like, man, they're obviously not going to kill this heroic dog. That would be the weirdest move to make in 2023. And of course they're make it different. alive. They got to make it different, man. Uh, Chris Martin wrote in from Coldplay fame. Uh, he says, hey, everybody, I'm loving the small changes made to the game, getting to the lake house and expecting the ominous sound to be Lewis banging on the inside of a dresser only to find a Ganado instead. It was an excellent change made to throw off veteran player expectations. Yeah, so yeah, that was just that like Ganado like yeah, beating his head against the floor. Is that what was going mm-hmm. on there? That was weird. Um, chapter two. Uh, Yara writes in, they say the level design in Resident Evil 4 is some of the best I've ever seen. The valley area in chapter two is such a fun sandbox to fight. I died here a few times and each time I went about taking out enemies in a different exciting way. Between using a dynamite thrower to blow out the bridge with enemies on it, funneling enemies up the stairs, sniping from atop a building while kicking people off as they try to climb up the ladder near me, every variation I came across was engaging and there have been a dozen more areas with that feeling since then alley area i was i hit a point where i was like are they endless because right. i was like yeah, running around and i would just like hear somebody i wasn't even really in danger or like all of a sudden someone would be throwing a piece of dynamite at me and i was like where are you <laughs> like, i keep having the from? issue where like they keep appearing behind me but i don't hear them oh yeah so be i'll be design, like clearing maybe. out in fr- i'll be clearing out in front of me and then all of a sudden like from behind i'll be like where did you come from like i didn't hear you i don't know where you came from and it's i don't know it's i don't remember it happening as much in the original but it's starting to kind of like drain on me where i'm like oh i killed all these guys but oh no there's three more behind me that i didn't know were there i know it's resident evil 101 but still playing this it's always like should I be killing all these people i feel like if i was just a little better i could just run past so many things in this game, and it's always. Oh, tough I thought to you meant morally. I genuinely, oh. I'm not even making a joke. I, that's what I thought you meant. No, those old hags have it coming, Kyle. You see the wild look because they're their not face. zombies. So there is that moment of like, what am I? What am I doing here? For sure. But yes, I, yeah. I here I feel like you're encouraged to kill everyone, right? I mean, I I don't. It's not really a. There's some areas like, where you can run with Ashley, and they yeah. kind of encourage you to like shoot to incapacitate. Right, right. Um, but yeah, they build those areas on purpose to sort of drain your resources. And I hate when I recognize it, like the valley where you're like, this is just here to drain all my resources before like the boss battles. Sure. And I find it annoying because I was feeling really good about where I was, and now all my stuff's gone. <laughs> but there's stuff in there, though. You can find more stuff. Yeah, you just, yeah. But uh, it's like, or you could just not put it in there, and I can have my stuff. <laughs> Uh, my dog is hip says the valley is gaming at its best such great level design it's vertical it's frantic lots of options on how to approach it you're constantly having to fend off, fend off enemies from behind and at range even when i accidentally died from the rope bridge collapsing who knew i was thrilled to play it again uh, and then the tune writes and says while doing some post-combat resource gathering in the valley i hear a leftover villager mumbling somewhere above the rope bridge i'm standing on i look up to see them lob an axe that i dodge at the last second only to have it cleave the rope bridge in twain and plummet leon to a foggy doom uh-huh. it was total bs and i loved it <laughs> this is the tune <laughs> that does seem pretty good i that's also that might be the first place you can shoot dynamite out of people's hands right Which yeah is like, it's so satisfying. satisfying oh my yeah. god it, this also every time i shoot an axe like mid throw i feel like a champion and normally you know when they like depict people playing video games and bad tv shows and they're all like whoa whoa flailing around on their couch and stuff i always think that's overblown 
Except for this game, every time somebody's throwing something at me, I try to dodge it in real life. Am I alone? It, work? it, it works every time. I mean, I'm pretty <laughs> rarely hit. They have a pretty bad aim, but I just feel like there's something about the physicality of it in this game. It freaks me out every damn time. Maybe it's the sound. Um, oh, we forgot that the start of chapter two is, yeah, being chained up with uh, Luis, of course, which we mentioned oh, I guess, we at the top of the show. It. Well, we're all thinking I'm about never it all the time. About that. I genuinely thought that was a really smart move though instead of them just being like in the chair back to back which i think is what it was in the original right like yeah they were just sitting yeah they were tied up together yeah it was it was a cool idea like it showed a little more of their personality of like okay we're working against each other but then they're also cooperating to basically decapitate this guy who gets locked up in the chains like i like that cutscene a lot not for perverse sexual reasons just artistic merit it's okay Sarah. to admit that you saw something in it no, I wish. I wish right. I understood. I wish I understood the sexuality <laughs> of Leon better in my life. Um, but we'll see. Over the course of the game, maybe he'll win me over. Is he a dad at this point? Like, what what happened with him and Claire and that little girl in Resident Evil 2? What's the story there? That's a good question. Taking care of her? You should do some research. You think he would have yeah, mentioned her. Out. I think it's yeah. like a Last of Us situation where Ashley's becoming his new daughter. She She does have some Ellie energy in that first cutscene when she kind of like attacks you uh, right right that was fun and the writing was just as good as the last of us then when uh leon <laughs> says well that went well um every time every time i tell her to go away and then come near and she goes okay i think of the end of the last of us <laughs> <laughs> you know kyle you laugh you laugh and joke like it's silly hour here but elliot <laughs> writes in and they say growing up i miss resident evil entirely I first tried Resident Evil 4 after playing Gears of War, and the combat made me put it down immediately. It wasn't until Resident Evil 2 Remake that I picked the franchise back up. Now playing Resident Evil 4 for the first time, the first thing it reminded me of was The Last of Us. And then you get on the boat in the lake like God of War. The remake feels both original while being an obvious inspiration for a decade of third-person games. Yeah, I mean, I mean Bruce and Neil yeah. from Naughty Dog specifically cited Resident Evil 4 as a huge inspiration. Like, I remember even visiting Naughty Dog and them talking about like the, the clickers, they wanted those to be one hit kill because they're like, they're the chainsaw guys from Resident Evil 4. We just, we wanted yeah. our equivalent of the wild chainsaw men. If your shooter guy is off center slightly, Resident Evil 4 can be thanked, you know? Yeah, in some way, for sure. Do you think um, those chainsaw men, they were just the lucky and people women. and women. Do not forget. That's right. They took a chainsaw out of that glass ceiling. Um, do you think they were just the people that owned a chainsaw? And so they're picking it up. There's a special quality. And a sack. <laughs> you have to have both. And fair. then you have to cut out the little eye holes. But I I would like to see the Chainsaw Man without the sack on. Because I don't think those eyeballs line up. They no, feel like they're Kermit. Like, pa with. They're so pasted so close to that. <laughs> it's the yeah. silliest damn thing. By the thing. way, when you pre-ordered the original GameCube version, you could get a sack to wear as a mask. Uh, really? One of the most uncomfortable things I've ever put on my oh face. My Just, you wore that? Terrible. Especially murdering those people in it. That was deeply uncomfortable. <laughs> um, how many people do you think, not accidents, because I bet that happens all the time, but how many people do you think have actually been murdered by a chainsaw on planet Earth? Murdered? Questionable. Oh. Dismembered? Several. Yeah. Okay, so like sickos after they murder somebody in a more humane way than they... Yeah. What? I don't know. I mean, the opening of Chainsaw Man, the anime and manga, manga, he he kills a lot of people very quickly. Oh, really? If you count those, yeah. Okay. I think we just like the the Texas story. You know what that's called? Why can't I remember the obvious name? The Texas, Texas Chainsaw. 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 That's what it is. Um, Tyler uh, Kasishke writes in and says, "I love the intensity of the second chainsaw encounter." Bear traps everywhere. A tripwire you can hear, but you can't oh, see in the weeds. Bear traps. Chainsaw man chasing Christ. you. That section, that, that was like quintessential Resident Evil 4 is seeing the chainsaw man up ahead on the hill. It's like, oh, this mf -er. I think I can run by him. You try and run past. Of course, there's bear traps everywhere. Even if you get past those, then that tripwire goes off. It's like, damn it. And I keep running. Then they have a building. So, all right, here we go. You go to the door. The door is locked. It's like, oh, then you got to go around the side. And then chainsaw man's coming through. It's just like, oh, so, so you're trying to so skip good. the, like, and I don't mean that like insultingly. I like whoa, you're whoa. trying to skip these sequences where you're fighting chainsaw man. And I, like, I'm trying to skip as many fights as I can. Is not, it working? Because I really thought like you couldn't to a certain degree. I mean, not really. Apparently, I guess. it's not working based it's not. on what he just described. <laughs> I'm dying a lot. I mean, I, I would love okay. to see you know somebody go through this game and kill as few people as possible. Because maybe I am just more in that mindset of like a Resident Evil Two or something of just if you unload into everybody, it, 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 
it's not the smart move. It's it's not a game where you're in one location in the way you are with past Resident Evils, right? You're not constantly yeah. looping through the same hallways and stuff like that. It's a very linear game. So it, at this, and it is, it's like 70% action, 30% horror to me. Like, yeah. I feel like you're supposed to just kill everyone, but maybe there is a way to do it. I don't know. No, I think you're right. Um, yeah, Justin Ray writes in, says, I feel bad for barging in the Plaga who is just minding his business, taking a dump. He's probably pooping out the little tentacles thing, though, so I don't think you need to feel so sorry for him. Uh, Johnny Magrippus says, those traps are unbearable. And then Nikki B writes in and says, did anyone else feel like OJ Simpson from The Naked Gun as Leon walked into every possible bear trap? <laughs> yeah, yeah I do that yeah. all the time. Yep. OJ and, Simpson? And really good some, of them are, some of them are super obvious, but I feel like mm -hmm. those are only there so that you'll be watching those as you walk into a different one. Right, right. <laughs> At least the enemies can walk into them, too. Yeah. Because then That's I nice. feel a little bit better about it. But there's literally so many bear traps. <laughs> and, like, the least Ashley could do is, like, warn me about them. Like, what is she looking at? Right, right. Yeah. She, but she just watches me get my foot chomped. I think just she's going to like Tell her to grab a stick and just start poking right? them or something. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice if she just did that little thing? And even if it's, like, a stick in my inventory or something, I feel like that'd be something yeah. interesting for her to do. It is uh, funny that how the way, I mean, I don't know how you guys are taking them out, but you could just shoot them, but I don't want to waste the ammo. So I always, you no, know, I, I try to line up with my really, knife and really stab them. <laughs> I've yeah. like walked into a few trying to get them. Yeah. They're, yeah they're really you can use the bolts. That seems like a good way to go. Um, white mix. I didn't buy the bolt. That's a waste. Excuse me? Just use bullets. Hang on. Does anybody else have that bolt? Just hit shots. Okay. Just I, hit shots. <laughs> Right. I nice bought it and I have not used it once yet what? and I've carried it around in my inventory the entire time and it's wow. just taken up taken up space. I don't know why. What yeah, I guess what other what what loadouts are people using? I have the original handgun, a shotgun and the bolt thrower and I feel like I need to I need to make you some changes. You get the sniper rifle? No. Did I miss that or could I just have purchased it? Store. I think you buy it. You okay. Buy it. I could. I have a I, lot of um, money now, but. I did upgrade. I used the spinels or spinal. I don't know how you pronounce it. Spinel to get the, the slightly better handgun and then leveled mm -hmm. that up quite a lot. Uh, and the Uzi and the shotgun and the sniper. Um, and then I have red nine in storage because I'm, I'm not really finding a lot of use for that. Is that dumb? I know Tim Turry back at Game Informer who played this game 3000 times. He was all about the red nine. Is it? Stupid. Every that's what all of the internet said. So I oh, really? I got that one and I have been using that as my main pistol and it is great. It 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 shoots fast but it seems weak. Am I misinterpreting that? Am I using it wrong? Um it's stronger and it, okay. and when you upgrade it it I'd say like maybe a quarter of the people I shoot they just they just instantly die from a headshot. This is on the okay. easier level anyway. Um So my, yeah, and my... then and then I got the the shoulder yeah. Um, you know, stock for it. So right. it's pretty good. I mean, my strategy... The, the like, internet didn't steer me wrong. All right. My strategy is almost exclusively, like, in the in the context of that world, if they're talking about Leon, you know, if, if they're talking about the he is legend guy, like, coming through and killing them all, like, the gossip that they're sharing is that I aim exclusively for kneecaps. Yeah. Like, I shoot yeah. everyone in the knees and then kick them, um, which is, like, a great strategy <laughs> for the original... And I, it's almost like I'm stuck doing it. Like, I don't know how else to play Resident Evil 4 at this point, but I, I don't know if it's still, like, the best strategy. Yes, I am it's, totally it with seems, you. It seems, yeah. It seems, I mean, I've I've been shooting them in the head, and that also triggers it, it right. seems like. Um, yeah, and and that, that was another question I had early on of, like, oh, is this pretty much mandatory if you're, if you're trying to get through without using all your ammo on guys? Because that's, like yeah. that's, like, a one-shot... And then most of the time, if they don't turn into the squid monsters, you, it's just, you take it's them the out with just one to, shot and one melee. To just get everyone to back off, right? Because right? if right. you can get one person down and then like four people behind them and then you kick them, then you have some breathing room. You know, you can like yeah. reload or whatever you need to do. Also, nothing better than kicking somebody into an explosive wire. I don't know if you've done that <laughs> yet, but it's like, oh God, it is so sweet. But it is, it's such a silly game and it, to have a core strategy if you don't want to shoot them in the legs just to be like oh you have to shoot this person in the head 
long enough until you can melee them by then just kicking them as hard as you can. But you can't kick them until you've shot them like four times in the head. And that's just video game 101. That's obviously. what they train you at the CIA. <laughs> that's it's like, right. It's, you know, Very specifically. agency he's part of, I don't even know. Uh, Louis K. Uh, says, I will purposely get enemies into melee state multiple times just to deliver a picture-perfect German suplex. Having to run behind to do the move is such a fun exercise and you're rewarded with a fun animation. Oh. Leon clearly spent a good of the time uh, of the chunk mm-hmm. between two and four working on uh, the indies, says Lewis. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't I think I've done, done that at all. I'll have to try that. Yeah. So instead of kicking him in the front, is that it? Is you just have to run behind him? Yeah, I haven't done that, but that sounds that sounds great. I would like to suplex more people. Um Shango Congo is defending me in my decisions in life, saying, My favorite new addition has to be the bolt thrower. The added tension of how slow it is to aim as well as reload makes using it all the more rewarding. I also love the thrill of frantically having to pick up used bolts from downed enemies while dodging oncoming attacks in the encounter. That, the thing that you are describing, none right. of that sounds fun to me. <laughs> but what if... I, like, none of that sounded fun. <laughs> but you don't have to worry about ammo. It's, in theory, infinite. I really love the way that it shoots really slow, it reloads really <laughs> slow, and I have to pick up every single bullet I shot. <laughs> right! But you pick it up. It's called recycling, Sarah. It's the future try it and it is cool and like they encourage you they're pushing me so heavily into this by like having those notes which is also weird like merchant tip use the bolt thrower and then you get the bolt thrower and it's like on sale it's just 20% marketing, off. dude he just wants you to buy that thing he's yeah. trying to offload that oh inventory. wait that's gross but then you know no they, one no one buys them so he's, he's got to try <laughs> and sweeten the deal it's based on the online economy but they definitely after they encourage you so heavily to buy it there they have a spot in the game where it feels very set up for it, where it's like lone enemies kind of wandering around, super spaced out, which is like perfect bolt thrower territory. Because in the midst of a lot of chaos, yeah, the last thing I want to do is worry about, okay, one bullet's over there, and then one's over there, and they can go pick up that one over there. But uh, let's see, Liam Harvey says, so I ditched the handgun in chapter three and fully committed to the bolt thrower. Interesting, Liam, for the whole game. And I got to say, don't sleep on the bolt thrower. It's got that classic Resident Evil stop and pop. The two seconds or so it takes to ready this thing can be very intense without upgrades. It can reliably open enemies up to a melee takedown, and you can retrieve the bolts, conserve ammo. Uh, Attaching sticky mines makes it an easy recommendation if you want to shake up the combat. That has been a big thing. Like if I'm out of grenades and stuff, just throwing sticky mines on that bolt thing, and especially like in the house when they're crawling through the windows, I was just like, lobbing mm. sticky mines at everybody slowly crawling through a window and it was a very nice explosive way to to make a more impactful fight um joe dean says it took a lot of willpower but after getting the punisher i did manage to sell the starting handgun i felt the need to do it did any of you sell your weapons oh yeah yeah when course. you find like the next one up and like the the rifle and the shotgun like you just sell the previous one and you get the money and then you invest yeah and uh, any upgrades you added to them, like, are factored into that. So yeah, which is I don't know if it was. Uh, do you remember Sarah's? I don't. I don't. I don't want to do too much. Like, was it like this? But I mean, was it I like that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. I don't remember struggling in either game too right. much with like money issues. Right. Um, yeah, I do. I do like that the game. Also, I, I figure it's a merchant tip or what, but they they make that note of like, hey, you're not going to lose money if you sell them with attachments. They had some line too of like. Basically, it's like, hey, we're on your side, player. <laughs> it had some line yeah. of just be like, yeah, we, we kind of want you to have fun here, so go ahead and try out different weapons. Don't yeah, just they're a lot more open thing. about like, no, you should just sell it. Like, don't right. worry, we're not going to waste your money. And like, with the selling the treasures, they're like, no, you this, we literally just gave you this to sell. Please sell it. Right. Please have fun with our game. Uh, Brian Stanley says, the laser sight is incredible and worth every spinel. Uh, I can shoot shifty ganados and shiny medallions from across the map with this thing. Other than treasure maps, I do not want to spend my spinels on anything else. Uh, what I do you... thought that was just a nostalgic thing. Like, yeah, you know yeah I don't I mean? understand like was... the laser sight. I don't either. I and mean, that's my what it was out? in the original. And I thought that was kind of like if it was if you were if you were missing it, you could buy it. But maybe it's better. I don't know. Maybe, but especially with like a mouse, I can't imagine it's really going to come in handy. I know. I was like, there's a there's a reticle right here that I can aim over whatever oh. I want to shoot. And Sarah, you played the Wii version, right? Which also yeah. So like, there was literally yeah. a like flashing circle that like flew across yeah. the screen. So the 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 original version, you there was no on screen cursor. It was all based on the laser. That makes 100%. more sense. Yeah. So 
that that's funny that you never encountered it that way but yeah no i was like why do i need a laser sight for a pistol that's funny yeah that's that's how because yeah you would have to get the laser sight to show up on enemy heads that's basically how you Mm. aimed in that game or knees if you're me uh fish isle says leon feels weighty at first his movement felt sluggish but after some time at the game it started to feel right leon's cool guy moves have real weight behind them and you can feel the impact Another person is complaining though that uh, combat feels too, too stiff and Leon feels too weighty. It definitely hmm. it's taken some getting used to. It feels like starting it up. Maybe I've just been playing too much Elden Ring or something. But it's like feel like I need a roll. I feel like I need something else just to move it, a little here. It does. It does feel weird not having a roll or more of a dodge. And I, I'm just bad at the parry. I think um, and yep. can't really pull that off. I do. I do love. In terms of of the little detail kind of things, I love how loudly he busts through doors if you run into a door. <laughs> like you slam that thing open so loudly, um, it's just very satisfying. Especially if it's like or one the way of those... he goes out a window. Like the man yeah. leaps through windows like his life depends on it, <laughs> and right. he's like, Poof. yeah. Especially those that doors. Is, that is something like... I missed from the original, though. Is you would go up to the door, you press A, he would open it slowly, but if you press a at any point during that animation again he would kick the door with all his right wife. right and that's it's it's still satisfying to sprint through a door right like jeff i'm saying you get that really loud noise but the act of like having that mm. window to choose if you want to kick that door open with all your might is, is something i do miss yeah uh derek m writes in they say up until about chapter four i didn't think parrying was all that big of a deal since you got to give up some knife health for it <laughs> knife health uh but now that i realize that a perfect parry takes pretty much no knife health and automatically puts the enemy into a melee position i pretty much began treating this game like it's a sword fighting game (laughs) uh so many people wrote in about the parry uh omri kernet brady g uh brian paradis uh randolph sparks talking about how generous the window parry is Uh, am i using this enough or well like i don't i'm also not i don't get that close to the enemies that's just not how i play resident evil games so i usually stay back pretty far but i've only parried a chainsaw once okay out of fear i I have a really dumb knife question the knife that you repair versus like the kitchen knives you pick up what's the distinction there the kitchen knives you pick up are those like the shivs and last of us like that's like the stab and leave no i and maybe we can keep an eye on chat if they'll correct us but i think the kitchen knives just die faster so if your you know your fixable knife collapses then you have the kitchen knives but they just they're not going to last as long okay okay Okay. but they it's the same idea it sounds like the 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 main knife does do more damage too according to chat okay yeah especially after you upgrade it um and when you upgrade the durability on it it does last quite a while okay um yeah uh omri kuranet says the addition of pairing adds so much depth and excitement to every combat instance leveling the playing field without taking away the difficulty or being too much of a skill check it feels so essential it might be difficult to go back to resident evil games that don't have parrying yeah it feels like the hardcore resident evil fans are all about this parry like that people are obsessed with this parry feels like they either love it or they hate it they're like, it, you know, you're not supposed to get a second chance when you mess up. Like, you should just yeah. die to the chainsaw man. Like, the stakes used to be so much higher. Is that dumb? I mean, it, for people on Patreon, at least, it seems like largely positive. But how has streaming this thing been, Sarah? Have people been jumping in and sharing a lot of hot takes? I've just seen some people who, like, really, like, on my Twitter feed who just really weren't in. Like, they thought that the parry system kind of made it a little too easy Mm. you know because you do kind of have like a second chance to save yourself yeah um but i don't use it anyway so i need doesn't apply to me i i need to experience it more i think uh yeah beating down brian writes in and says some of the new mechanics are stellar being able to parry just about anything being able to duck under projectiles or dodge past swings of a weapon that is nice like that bull big like hammer swing thing it's like all right alley oop uh but my favorite is being able to cancel an enemy grab if you hit r2 quickly enough so you slash him with your knife that was a game changer once I realized it, says Beaten Down Brian. But that does use a knife juice, though. I, well, right? I wonder, because he says quickly enough. I wonder if this is something else other than the, the big okay, old knife Because I'm thinking about when you can, you can either tap A or you can press R2. Right. Which maybe, in there, like if I were thinking about it more, there are instances where I would just be like, all right, I'm going to tap A here. I don't want to use my knife juice. But it feels like a QTE every time it comes up. Where I'm like, oh, I need to hit R2. And then I'm like, retroactive. I'm like, oh, maybe I 
maybe I shouldn't have done that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Jason Wojnar uh, says Jeffum is a coward and that hardcore difficulty feels very well balanced. I comb through every inch for supplies and I feel like I have just enough to get by. The knife being a finite resource is a great way to shake things up for those well acquainted with the original. I, come on, Jason, don't attack poor Jeff. Uh, not right in and says, I feel like they nailed the ammo economy in this game. I never feel like I have way too much. Decent amount can be scavenged from enemies and I've run completely dry a few times. It's well balanced for a compelling survival horror experience. I mean, that's the, that's the magic of Resident Evil is, I mean, compared to any other franchise, is there anything as satisfying as just like finding bullets in Resident Evil? It still is just like this godsend and they're, they're so Except good. Except for when it's like a gun you don't use. Right, right. Oh, this is and so much space. And then you're like, this is useless. <laughs> what am I going to do with all this? Um, let's see. People, oh boy, do they have thoughts on this. Uh, let's see. Tim O'Keefe says some hyperbole is coming, so get ready, everybody. Allowing the user to auto-sort the inventory case is the worst decision that Capcom has made regarding Resident Evil since releasing Resident Evil 6. <laughs> Joking aside, case management is part of the fun in these games, and that option is just a bit lame. I, then just don't use it! <laughs> but why even put it in there, Sarah? Organize it all you want. I didn't uh, even know that was there. I didn't and see I it either. It literally just at the bottom of the screen and like really tiny. It's like press alt to, you know, oh. auto organize. Oh, God. It was. Everybody, everybody spends way more time than they need to like lining up, like basically nulling your entire attention mm -hmm. oh, yeah. case. Though, right? yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it took me a while. I maybe was in chapter, because like, you lost all the inventory sort of chapter two. I was maybe in like chapter three before like, you know what, I'm going to start organizing this. And it. It was a wave of relief that rushed through my body. Like, it feels so much better. Like, obviously, health goes on the lower right. I mean, that's just attache case 101. It just, it, it feels cleaner and simpler, you know? Like, rotating things to line up just right. It's beautiful. Uh, Kiwi the Goo. I don't know about that name. They say, so much to love here as a long Resident Evil fan, but I have one critique. The auto sort function is whack. It always puts my wep <laughs> weapons on the bottom of the case and it messes everything up. Guns up top, the herbs, then ammo. Am I crazy? That being said, even if the auto sort was great, you gotta manually sort your case for the true experience. Hey, look, we're with you. We're with you. Uh, Carter it's H. It's so wild that you can do that in the middle. And you could just stop any fight and just play Tetris in your suitcase <laughs> if you want to. It's perfect. It's so funny. I still haven't played Resident Evil 4 VR, but Kyle, I, you lead me to believe that that's even fun in VR to mess with that nonsense. Well, I mean, it's functionally the same, so yeah. yeah well, that sounds great. That sounds great. <laughs> uh, Von S. says, I have two gripes so far with the game. Number one, I wish they did not get rid of the Leon model in the inventory menu. I'll miss seeing Leon catching oh, no. an egg in his hand or holding the hand cannon over his shoulder. Uh, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I guess they just want to make it a little cleaner. Uh, but then Vaughn says, also number two, the constant ambushes from behind. I hope this was just a village section thing, but I've counted at least six times where I encounter enemies in front and then suddenly spawn more behind me. Do you think? No, it's been happening. That's been happening way more, and it's starting to get kind of annoying because they are so quiet. Right. Um, it must be by design. I don't know, it's weird. Then, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's just like supposed to be that way, but yeah, it's happening a lot. Yeah, it doesn't... Dead Space was so egregious with that, with the deepest dive on it, even with the remake, that like this this hasn't struck me as exceptionally out of the ordinary. But it is, I guess I've had a couple moments of like, wait a minute, I was pretty sure there was nobody back there, and now yeah, I'm here. It, yeah, it's hard to tell where they're coming from sometimes, and and sometimes I feel like, you know, there's vertical stuff above me, and it's like, okay, maybe they jump down from there, but. But then, but then there are other times where it's like, I've cleared this place out pretty good, and now there's four guys that I apparently didn't see in here. Right, right. Uh, okay, back to chapter two, all these fun comments here. Um, yeah, the canyon area, like the wind in that canyon area, I feel like you can, you can feel it Why so much it more. Why was it so windy? Remake. It's just so damn windy! Garrett Hullfish says, also, I couldn't get enough of the hanging beads in the village chief's manor. Oh, my, me neither. I was running back and forth for a while in it's those. good he's gotta give leon a break too he's had a tough day like this is the thrill of his well, life and you're running his head through the beads <laughs> just constantly. banging against it it's a head massage <laughs> walking uh into them to watch them sway was only enhanced by the expert audio of them clacking into each other they really sounded like the wooden beads that were that they were meant to be i must have done that at least a dozen times thank you garrett for giving leon that break um is this yeah this is the same house i think where there's a bunch of like photos on the wall and mm -hmm. Leon, of course, because he's a maniac, just sees him and just says to himself, 
old photos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, who, what? Look at these old, these photos are old. And it's like, <laughs> good job, buddy. Say something helpful. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is, yeah. Then you get that, uh, the crystal marble that you have to like rotate in the door the mm -hmm. right way to make the shape. The, the Ganados, they're very into their logo. It's like, we've had two puzzles so far. Just like, just, just make Branding. the logo. Yeah, we spent a lot of money. Uh, Corey Schmitz designed it. Uh, we're very proud <laughs> of it. Uh, let's see, Jared Blake writes in and says, I've only played Resident Evil 4, 7, and Village, but when I noticed the size of the wardrobe in the room where you encounter Mendez, the guy with the weird eyes, uh, says Jared, at the end of Chapter 2, it gave me fla flashbacks to Lady D from Resident Evil 8. Do y'all feel like abnormal human size actually increases the scare factor for you? Or does it just increase the cheese factor? I mean, there, there was... I feel like there's a very clear lineage between, what is it, Mr. X and then Nemesis. And then it, mm -hmm. it seemed like they were setting him up uh, that way too. So I appreciate right. it when you get through the boss fight and it's like, oh no, I don't have to worry about this big guy. At, at some point I shot the hat off his head or or maybe it like blew off in an explosion or something like that. Yeah. I was like, uh, I'm, I don't like these these types of enemies. Do you think we're scared of tall people because everything was scary when we were kids or just because people bigger than you can beat you up? And I'm asking Jeff I on this tall particular. tall people are just scary. It's true. Because, because they're stronger inherently? Just because they're abnormally tall. But it has to trigger some fear for some reason. It's just like a... It, yeah, they're tall. Right. They're That's the fear. <laughs> this is, what don't you understand yeah. about this? What don't you understand about this? Sa Sarah, can you be my therapist? I feel like we could really get to the bottom of a lot of issues I'm having. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, chapter three. We're in it now. I mean, I guess we should talk about the fact that Leon got injected by Mendez. Yeah, I, and such he, a weird thing to do. I forgot about I that entirely. He he collapses in the fishing house and like loses three hours. Right. And Hunnigan's pretty accepting of that. And, the, and also like, worried. why would Leon not share? He, he's like covering it up. Like he doesn't want. He's like, I don't worry about it. I was out for three hours. Ah, it's fine. I was just dealing with something. It's like just. She's your handler. Like talk. Tell her what's going on. Right. She's not going to chastise you for like <laughs> like messing up your mission or something. Well, know? to be fair though, I mean. Leon has seen how they clean up messes when people get infected with stuff. Mm. So maybe oh, that's he's interesting. Just like that's true. Playing it cool. Don't tell the baggage. president that people are infected <laughs> over here. Um, yeah, looking into the history of Resident Evil 4's development, I mean, it's a long, sorted tale. Maybe you all remember it, but like originally, Kamiya was directing it. And then it's like, oh, we want to have a bunch of like gothic architecture. So we're going to Europe to take all these pictures of gothic architecture. But the main architecture should be really cool. Oh, wait, no, actually, this game should be Devil May Cry instead of Resident Evil 4. And that was like how that whole franchise was born. But I got to wonder then, is it because of like the gothic architecture and Europe from Devil May Cry that Resident Evil 4 was locked in for the European setting? And then the other weird thing to think about is I guess like in the, all the early versions, there were like four attempts at Resident Evil 4 before they landed on this one. But in some of the early ones too, like Leon was diseased and he could like see ghosts with his disease. So I wonder if this is one of those weird elements that was like stuck with this game through all the yeah. reboots. It's like at some mm. point, Leon has to get sick. Nah, nah, nah. They even, they released gameplay footage of like when it was like fog was like the weird enemy. It was just this like right. green fog that would float around. Fog. Like, can't imagine it would be fun to fight, it but turns yeah. you inside out. Um, Jeff, yeah, do you have any thoughts just on like the fact that everybody's sick except for Luis in this game? Apparently, yeah, I don't, I don't know uh, what's going to happen. I hmm. did not know any of that from the lore, um, from what I know of the lore. So, um, it's weird. I, I'm very skeptical. I, I like when Luis is like, don't worry, you just need a surgery. And right. It's like, oh, great. You're, you're just going to, we're going to go to the castle and you're going to do a surgery at some point and, <laughs> and we'll both be surgery. fine. <laughs> yeah. Also, that yeah. sounds fun. And the surgery is just yeah, like. They're really trusting. <laughs> like we were talking about in the beginning. They're like, Luis is like, come to the castle. I'd be like, I, I think we should just hide in a bush until the government can pick us up. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's it's not even raining anymore by the by the end of the chapter that you're on. No. It's like you could get that Great helicopter point. in here now. Yeah, it'd be absolutely fine. Um, I like that you can see the castle from the lake. I didn't remember that. That like how looming the entire castle is there. But I think that's very cool. It's big. It's I don't, I don't know if you knew that. Big. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Empiric Unicorn says, Leon reacts to heavy rain the same way I would if a stranger sneezed, <laughs> sneezed me in the face. Uh, he just doesn't like it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's gross. Uh, I, I do want to cry. We said it a little bit, but I, the, when it's really windy and rainy, yeah, it looks really good. It's really intense. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, there was like a day one patch, right? Or did they just promise it? I don't know if they did it of like toning down those rain def- rain effects because yeah, I, it, yeah, I don't know if intense. it was patched or not, but I, it's still very intense and cool. Yeah, yeah, I do like too when it's raining. And Leon's running around and then he gets inside from the rain, just kind of like a shuffle, like oh, get this off of me. Like those little rain based animations like are very good. Uh, let's see. GRN says, I came down with bronchitis this weekend, making this game much more immersive since I'm coughing right along with our infected boy, Leon. Hey, way to go, GRN. Congratulations. Congrats. That's the 40 experience. Uh, Alan L says, I completely forgot about how there could be snakes hiding in boxes in the original game. Mm. And then one completely caught me off guard in chapter three. Uh, there are a bunch just slithering around in the later fish farm section, and I even saw one swimming. Besides selling them for a quest, you can also eat them, which I figured out during a very desperate moment in that area. And then Fred DeNovo mm-hmm. commented on that comment and said, uh, I thought they took snakes out of the game until one finally got to me in Chapter 3. Anyone else surprised by I their was later introduction? I them. Yeah. Because... <laughs> yeah. That that's like another that's another OJ Simpson bit of like I'm constantly stepping in bear traps and snakes snakes are constantly lunging at my face. And right. it's like you would go up to a box yeah, and you remake... slash every box twice. Like that was mm-hmm. the strategy. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Like the remake is so good. I was like approaching a box in an area that I was familiar with, and I was like, "This box has a snake in it." Like my my intuition was just like snake box Snakey and sense. i popped it open and there was a snake in it <laughs> of course yeah uh there was a like one snake that i needed for the quest like the last one i needed for the quest and it was in that fish farm area which was really tough but it was just off by itself after i took out all the enemies and i just shot the one snake like one time but leon had like a bark as if i was in the middle of fight middle of a fight so like, i shot the snake that i wanted to kill and find for the quest and still leon's like they just keep coming <laughs> After shooting them, I was like, no, this, this is a good thing, buddy. We, we want that little snake. <laughs> By the way, Jeff, I'm, <laughs> you, hey, correct me if I'm wrong. You weren't on the deepest dive for God of War Ragnarok, right? No. So you just genuinely are with me that making the constant reference to O.J. Simpson tripping over stuff in Naked Gun is a reference that everybody should understand? <laughs> Apparently. Okay, it it was mentioned earlier, and it is, it is <laughs> that is exactly yes. how I felt because it is such a such an S show when I'm yes. walking around. It's like, oh, <laughs> yes. There's another bear trap. Thank you. I will go from one bear trap literally to another one. Like yes. a second later on the other leg. And it's like, my God. Would you believe, <laughs> would you believe these hacks I recorded the deepest heaven and got a war with? They said that was a bad analogy. Jill Grote and Suriel and Kyle Bossman. They called it a stupid analogy to use. Well, what was and it? And then you decided to use it, it again in this one? Well, I think the, the community, I think we're making a callback to that, I would imagine. If it was a genuine O.J. Simpson and Naked Gun reference, then I would respect it all the more. Um, it was because in God of War Ragnarok, there's like poison pods that I kept popping. It was like, bah, bah, in Valheim, or mm. in Vanaheim. And so I okay. compared that to... I OJ mean, I, I, I feel like stepping in bear traps is much more of a one-to-one analogy for that. That's yes. right. So maybe... Is, yeah. is the sideshow Bob Simpson stepping on the rakes? Is that uh, maybe that a better one? That, that works. Uh, you could go that way. Uh, it, it's less problematic. Murderer. Yeah. Sideshow Bob, he's murdered fewer people, I think. Uh, you know what? That's actually a good point. Uh, Brandon S. writes in and says... Okay, this is... Brandon, this is why we do the deepest dive. Thank you for this. Brandon S. says, I love the look of the limestone caves in Chapter 3. As a geologist, it always excites me when the geology gets this kind of detail. They had all kind of speleothems, which are cave formations that precipitate from rainwater that infiltrate the cave, from stalagmites and stalactites to columns and flowstones. Thank you, Brandon. Oh, yeah. I nice. hope to love something as much as you love caves at some point in my life. Uh, so thank you for this. Uh, Michael Tucker writes in and says that, well... Let's see. Anything before we get to the boss fight? Any thoughts on this chapter? Going to the the farm, getting the fuel for the boat. Leon has some line where he's like, no, this is what I'm talking about when you pick up the yeah, gas or whatever the hell. Yeah. Oh, this is also uh, the I chapter. Do... Oh, go ahead. Oh, wait. Well, but you're, you're, uh, no, you're fine. You're fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, this is uh, also where they introduce just the dumbest looking dogs with the 
most cartoony teeth no, all over the place. No, I like that they changed the dogs to look less like dogs. Yeah. Oh, you oh, think that was the true. idea? I liked. I like that they look more like monsters and less like dogs because now you can tell your good boy, your buddy, from the evil monster dogs. That's interesting. Okay. So, yeah. So when you infect a dog with the Las Plagas, then it just, it has to sprout more teeth and it looks further and further from original. Yeah, it makes sense. It just made me laugh that like, made me laugh when you see the first dog, the super dog with super teeth that Leon just sees it and he goes, damn it. (laughs) <laughs> it's just his gut reaction to seeing this. I mean, that's the same thing I would say. And I, I probably guess. did say when I saw it. I hate those yeah. dogs. I saw a demon dog coming at me. God, no, I gotta do with the these most guys. realistic dialogue in the game, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> God, crap. <laughs> um, I like there's a, there's a house, uh, and there's like a poster on the wall with writing on it, and it was just basically like, oh, we have a foolish intruder from the outside, but don't worry about him. At some point, he has to cross the lake and... Let's just say a certain something will take care of him in the lake, this foolish intruder. And then Leon sees that, and then he just has a line to himself where he goes, the lake, let's hope for no more surprises. It's like, they just told you that there's a giant <laughs> monster in the lake. Like, come on, man. Well, it's well not then he watches someone die in the right. lake, and he's like, let me just grab this rickety, currently <laughs> like sinking boat. And let's give it a go. Right. Ah, but no gas. Come on. You got to put it in when <laughs> no, you're done. They don't even pay attention. Be kind. Rewind. What do they call it in Metal Gear Solid? It's like on-site acclimation or something. Like you, you just got to get On-site procurement. It OSP. Yep. OSP. Yeah. On-site procurement, right? Yeah, that's it. That's what Leon's doing. OSP, baby. Michael Tucker writes in. He says, the Del Lago fight is basically exactly the same as the original. Do you think they could have uh, used this as an opportunity for a large change? Or is the original fight one of those moments that's too iconic to change? Well, I, I always liked it in the original because it's all spectacle, you know, and you're not worried about ammo or anything like that. Like, it's like, it's it's weirdly relieving. It's yeah. like a, yep. it's like a yeah. strictly yep. fun boss fight. Uh, so I, I I don't think I wanted a lot of change or anything like that. I was I was happy with it being pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm with you. It, it's weird that like I remembered the big boss fight in the lake, but I didn't remember the mechanics of it. So I was like, God, I'm trying to remember. I probably have to throw grenades in there. So I'm totally with it. It just felt like that relief of like, oh, I just aim a harpoon a couple times. The end. Done deal. Yeah. Uh, B done 912 says the Del Lago boss fight was probably my least favorite part of the game so far. Maybe my aim was just bad, but it took longer than I hoped for. Uh, with no real updates. I watched my friend stream it on Hardcore, get the trophy, but it immediately crashed without saving and he had to redo it. <laughs> oh, bummer. Uh, yeah, I didn't have any crashes. Sorry. I, I had one crash walking up to a typewriter, but... Uh, oh, really? Oh, like, that's I was literally frustrating. Walking. It's like, oh, time to save so and bad. shut things down. Oh, and my like, God. Couldn't but, quite load uh, that music. Yeah, it was... Uh, other than that, though, I haven't really encountered any bugs or anything. I had a, a shovel really spin its ass off in the house, which was fun. I got some footage of that. Oh, really? That does sound great. That does sound great. I, I will I will say kudos to them also, and I can't imagine this was the case um, with the original, but just having checkpoints as well above and beyond when you're saving is is really nice, and I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, let's see. Liam B. Uh, says, I never really engaged with the shooting gallery in the original game. This version's shooting gallery is a blast. Found myself sinking hours into it to try to nail every skull in each round. Uh, and Mugman... Douglas says, my first deepest dive. Welcome, Mugman. We exist because of people like you jumped in on Patreon. They say, exciting Congrats stuff. That's right. I played a little of the original on my friend's GameCube. But this is the first completion attempt. I was making great time up until I realized the shooting range was a mini game and not just for practice. As a world-renowned masochist, I'm ashamed to say that I didn't move until I got an S on three challenges and every pilot skull and treasure chest was a hit. Why does Capcom hate you? Oh, Douglas, they love you. They want you to have fun with the pirate. At least wacky you zone. get something from this. Like the charms have like benefits. In the first one, I think it was just strictly cosmetics. Right. It was nothing that would actually change gameplay or alter anything. It was strictly like I don't think it was anything that would like help. Like they weren't like giving you bullets or anything. Right, right. I got I got two of the same charm and then a you know a second charm. So I had three charms total, but two of them were the same, and it wouldn't let me equip like the same one twice. Mm. So I just mm. sold the extra. I don't know if that was the best strategy, but I was bummed by that that I I you know had to use a bunch of these coins I earned and then I mm-hmm. couldn't even use all my charms. Right, right. Yeah, and apparently, um, 
like it sets what you will get for your for your coins like at the beginning of your entire save like it's set for you so even if you really? even if you reset the save or you do them um i think in like even in different order or different combinations uh it's always going to be the same for that playthrough yeah. um so you, you're kind of get stuck it. with what you got but because then because then people you know you might be resetting people would totally it. game it yes yeah. and so and the makes- lows are so fast on ps5 i wouldn't i wouldn't hesitate uh to be scummy yeah yeah uh, so you get across the lake by the way, running over those barrels in that lake is so satisfying. Just like, ah, oh, here's some free money. Just jump around. It's just, it's a wild arcade you're living in Leon. Um, and then that's the scary part with the, the dark and the chanting of the forest and the flashlight and that stuff. That was cool. Yeah, um, like part. and then this is where you first see the, the big old heads popping. Like Jeff, do you remember that at all from last time you played like those heads popping? Um, not from when I played, but I've seen enough footage and what oh yeah to, to remember that yeah. okay yeah it is weird just like how all these emotions from 2005 just come flooding back the first time you see that's like oh that's right dealing with these guys and always that tension of like who's gonna pop who's gonna pop but i did not know and maybe I'm a, a bad player of resident Evil 4 with the original like this game really spells out like by the way it's flash grenades and it takes care of them like i did not know that that was such an easy fix for those guys i was unloading so many shotgun blasts into them first yeah, I don't think it. I don't think it really tells you in the original. Okay, but it's the same. I, think I, I even imagine, found right? it out by accident. You know, you run out of grenades, you throw down a flash grenade. These things are useless, but it's all I got. Oh right. crap! That that like completely deleted them. I'm gonna. These are now valuable. You know. And they had some line about like, oh, because they don't appear in the daytime. They only appear at night. They don't like the sunlight. But it's like, is that? I guess that makes sense. I'm trying to remember without spoiling anything. It's like. Yeah, I didn't put that together. Yeah, is there any other part of the game where it's? light outside again and they wouldn't be there but i guess they just don't have to account for it i guess or you're just inside and it doesn't is, pop is up. that is that like the narrative reason for why you don't see them until i guess so. oh that's smart of course yeah of course it's what they're doing yeah but i really like just the transition of time I, I think a lot about it ever since like red dead remember how red dead would try to account for like what time you do a mission where you go into a mission and it'd be like a cutscene. jeff you remember red dead redemption 2 um, cool, we'd go in and go to a cutscene, and it would like why don't you do the mission at night but if you went there a day you'd have like a little 30 second cutscene in the intro and then it would, like every time it would cut to a different camera like for a, a back and forth it would like change the time of day with every cut and I noticed that even with Resident Evil 4 remake like you'll walk into a tiny little structure to like use a typewriter and then walk back out and it's like okay now it's it's suddenly dawn you know like they're changing the time of day in a really fun way um, so then you go across the lake you get uh, the blasphemer's head and all the rest of them, blood oozes out like you've never seen blood come out of a statue before. It is just uh, way too much. Uh, Which that's all like completely new. Like none of that was in the original. Is that it's right? Cool. Yeah. I yeah. guess so. If you can't drive the boat, so like going to those two different locations and stuff to get those. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, with the puzzle where you got to press the right buttons and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because I was thinking about like, okay, well, I got to get back to the church. The church is just right up there. I'm looking at this map and it's so weird that they wouldn't let me have a shortcut there why wouldn't they have a shortcut from the lake going up to the village that seems really weird there's like some you know cliffs some like marvel cliffs that you can't quite climb up so all right i'll get in the boat and go around and then that's when it's like okay el gigante i forgot they need to funnel you to this area no matter what so despite the freedom of the boat they know exactly where they need to need to bring you uh brady g loves the journey of the wolf uh, thinking that they were dead and then having the wolf come back for the coolest possible moment during the El Gigante fight, howling at the moon with a lightning cracking so in the ridiculous. background. Yeah. Do you think they must have these stats? Are there any weirdos that didn't free the wolf or that somehow missed like the whining wolf? It's got to be like 95%, right? Yeah, it's got to be, right? Oh, it's too bad it's not connected to a trophy because then you could, add, you could maybe right. get a, an idea. Right? Yeah, that should be the platinum is just freeing the wolf, I think. Uh, Ken H also says the wolf howling at the moon before diving into the quarry assist you is an early moment uh, moment of the year front runner. <laughs> Look, it's good. It's good. There's no doubt it's good. Um, wh- did the, did I miss where the wolf went after the fight? I couldn't find him. He went up onto a rock, but his fur is literally the same color as the rock. I could barely see him. <laughs> okay, I could right. not find this dog. I heard him like barking. Yeah. I was like, where did you go? Right. He's literally just like sitting a little bit higher, like two feet off the ground, and he just blends in completely. Mm. Where's his lightning yep. now? I need it for just like a beacon. <laughs> I literally could not see him. He looks very chill. He's like ready to take a nap. Like he's yeah. like, I did my job. I'm done. 
I See ya. bit the big thing's leg a little bit. Yeah. And uh, then I just kind of stood there. That's it. For the rest of it. But that's what he did in the original anyways. Clay Carroll says, I was uh, left feeling empty and disappointed by the El Gigante fight. I remember the original being in a larger area and the giant itself feeling larger. The small space they have the fight in and his slow movement didn't give me the feeling of dread and panic that the original did. Uh, I don't know. That's just because you were a kid when you played yeah, it. Yeah, I think you were. Yeah. Bigger when you're. I just played it, and the areas are pretty similar in size. Okay. Um, and he still he does the same exact things. He just right. throws stuff at you. He just charges you. That I was. Think there are fewer buildings, though. I think, right? There used. There's I think two. There's three in the original. There might have been two. three, but yeah. he. I think he threw more things at you. Okay. I don't know, but I don't think that the area was that much different. That was really, I think, the first time. Like, I've been dying plenty in this game. Too much, some would say. But that was the first time in the game where it's like, I was scraping the barrel with ammo. Like, I, it was just about every shot I had went into that guy. Is it... Do you get up on its back and slice the yeah, parasite? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you all leave with plenty of ammo? Uh, Jeff, you don't count. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Well, the the first Maybe time you I play played on it, easy. Um, I don't know. It seems like you're struggling a little bit. Yeah, you're complaining a lot. Hey, this so, and I'm having fun. Tempting. So that's the, that's the difference right there. The the first time I played it against him, they were they were giving me grenades like crazy before I went in there. So I was chucking. I chucked like six grenades at him, yeah. and then and it it just didn't do that much. And it got to the point where it was like. I was really low on health and I had and I had blown through a ton of ammo and I was like, just kill me so I can redo this. And then I focus more on just headshots to get him mm -hmm. down. And he went down way faster and I used way less ammo. Smart. Yeah, it took me a while to warm up to grenades in this game. I was always like, I don't remember what the hotkey or the shortcut is for that. I don't really want to use them. But then once you crack that seal, it's like, if I have a grenade, I am tossing it. It is just, it's so fun. It's such a relief to toss out there. Uh, Yara writes in and says, Chapter 4 was such a blast for me. I couldn't help but make comparisons to God of War while riding around in your boat. Resident Evil letting you sit in silence for long stretches and think about your journey so far gave a great feeling of being alone in this depressing world versus God of War filling his moments with dialogue. For Resident Evil, it helped lend a tense atmosphere throughout the entire area that really worked for me and made traveling around from dock to dock so captivating. It was it was nice. That's probably the best time that Leo's had, or sorry, Leon's had so far. Leo would probably like it too. Uh, I Dead killed I killed one of the zombies with a harpoon. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, chasing me, and cool. I went to my boat and I harpooned him, and I was just like, "That's my peak gamer moment." That's sweet. So I, I thought that was think cool that. that they let me do that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Deadly Orange says the lake area is incredible. I stored all my weapons and drove around in my little boat, harpooning fish and selling them to the merchant. I made a ton of money and I had a blast doing it. Yeah, I should go. Oh, maybe sell some I should have done that. I, I did the mission where you, you know, there's to get the fish, and I think I caught one other one by mistake. You know, right. trying to get that one and sold that. But yeah, that would be a good way to just get you know, a load up on cash. Wawa says I turned a survival horror game into a fishing and farming game when I found the chicken area in the lake. My boyfriend calls it Resident Evil Animal Crossing. Thank you, Infinite Harpoons. Hey, that's just a good game, and no, no problems there. Um, Arlo G, I didn't understand what this person meant. Arlo G says, it did throw me off a bit at the end of the Del Lago boss fight. The lake just has some trees in it, but then in this chapter, suddenly a boat has come out of nowhere in the middle of the lake. Did they just add a... That sounds like a visual bug. Is that right? Or do they make like a crash boat in chapter boat. four? I don't know. I feel like I need to go explore the lake well, a little bit more. I mean, is he talking about the the place where you get r the red nine is a is like a, a half sunk ship that's in the middle of the lake. Yeah. Wait a minute. I Okay, I was about to buy the Red Nine. I don't need to do that. I can just, well, I guess now I do. I think you're passing. Well, now you do. Buddy. Oh, damn it. Okay. Is that where everybody yeah, got their Red Nine? For yeah. free. And then the merchant oh. sells it at a discount. Ugh, okay. They blew it. Uh, so maybe that's what they're talking about is maybe that sunken boat wasn't there in chapter three. Like during the boss I, yeah, fight? Yeah, I, I, it's one of those things that I think they're totally right that I just n didn't connect those dots. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, boat with treasure in it and a new gun. And it's not until now that I'm like, wait, where did that boat come from? <laughs> right, know? right. Uh, Wesley M says, I ate the unique fish before I got the quest because it was big and I needed inventory space and health. Now I'm not using the red nine because I can't buy the stock. I don't like how they lock away some upgrades as side quest rewards, but I'm loving the game overall. Okay, but, but it if you get be locked away, because I didn't do that 
I don't know what, what this fish uh, job that you guys are talking about. I didn't do a fish job. I mean, if you get this, you can just have to get spinels yeah. some other way, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Is what it comes down to. I guess so. From yeah. all the other, yeah, from all the other missions. Did you all buy the treasure map? Yeah. 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 Is no, it, absolutely. I don't need get money. That thing. I honestly, I feel like, especially with this new map where it'll like tell you if you're missing items, I feel like I don't really need to go around and do that. I'm not into the blue medallion stuff. I'm not going to waste my time combing over every inch of this game doing that. But it's not like, well, that's how you get hunting. the spinels though. Yeah, that's like it's it gets you good stuff. It's like worth it. Yeah, but then I have a decent amount of spinels right now just from like the side quests and stuff. And I'm looking at what I can get. It's like the red nine holster seems all right. There's like it an changes. Elegant- I ha- did you get the the um, the briefcase that like gets you more ammo drops and stuff like that? No, I guess that does sound. Yeah, good. like I, I don't know how it works. Maybe you're well, not- you you start with the case that gives you more ammo drops, right? Maybe you do. On easy. Oh, I know. baby mode. No, on. no, it was. I think I started with that on normal as well. Oh, okay. Well, exactly. no, it was one I had to buy because, like, I obviously I upgraded and it got larger and larger. But then there was a you know a trade opportunity where I could get a black colored case, and the black colored case increased ammo drops. Hmm. Interesting. So. I don't yeah. know. But no, it's it's the treasure map. I think is worthwhile, and it's like worth it to do all that stuff. Like it's. It gets you good stuff. It's it's not just like check, you know, going down a checklist of side missions. It's like the the rewards are worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, well, now it's kind of too late. Uh, I don't think I yeah, can get session. back out. Uh, are there more? There's more treasure maps and stuff, right? I would assume so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Patrick G. By the way, Sarah, are you? <laughs> hey, Sarah. I'm yeah. happy. I'm happy you're here. Um, are you enjoying playing this game again? Do you have any part of you that's like, oh, man, I just did this. It's- it, I don't have that. It's more just like I remember everything that bothered me in the first version or that I didn't want to do, and I keep going into it with like such trepidation. So like the chainsaw grannies, I didn't I really didn't want to face the chainsaw <laughs> grannies again. Okay. And I was not looking forward to it. And it's nice because they have been changing it up enough that like I go in thinking it's gonna be terrible. And then it ends up being fine with the changes they've made in the remake. Right. But it's like I do have this like laundry list of like things I'm not looking forward to. But but I'm kind of like going down and like checking the boxes. And do you think any of that's quality of life stuff, or it's always just like, oh, this enemy? Like I I remember some enemies later on without spoiling anything. It's like, oh, they scared the hell out of me. I don't want to fight those guys mm-hmm. again. <laughs> like, well, I think it, it you know it had to do with me playing on with a Wii mote. Right. So it's like the scariest thing about that was aiming with the Wiimote and yep. doing like quick time events with the Wiimote motion yeah. controls. So it's like with that out of the way, everything has been much more enjoyable right. than I previously remember it. Oh, good. Being. <laughs> yeah. So you're enjoying it overall still. Yeah, no, I still I really I mean, even after I mean, like in the game, I'll be like, I hate this. I hate this. It sucks. <laughs> I hate everything. And then, like, the game's over, and you're like, wow, what a pleasant time I had. Right. Because you just right. forget all those moments where you're, like, fighting for your life. Like, everything's going wrong. Yeah. I just keep having this feeling, too, of just, I know this is dumb video game guy 101, so please forgive me. But just that idea of just, like, why aren't more games good like this? Like, it's just like the perfect trickling out of systems, reveals, the perfect amount of backtracking. You know, I'm not a big Metroidvania guy. It's just like that little idea of like, oh, go back to the village. You'll encounter this. You're going to unlock this then. It's just like, I just, I, I feel so nostalgic for just like a relatively simply designed game that is just constantly going to tickle your brain in the right way like Resident Evil 4 does, you know? Patrick G writes in, and says, where you get the fish side quest, there's some good backstory, but an old man and his son. Then you find a creepy altar with the sacrifice. To top it yeah, off... I was talking about that earlier, yeah. Yeah, to top it off, there's a clockwork castian Castellan up there. I like to imagine they do some messed up things, uh, then drop a bobblehead. Anyone hunting them? Oh, there we go. Oh, I missed that. There Dang, you go. That sucks. Uh, uh, beating down Brian says there's a subquest that leads you to the chief's manor. Once upstairs, you find a second note about the first villager to become infected after being bitten by a dog. We learn that he eventually died in his shack when it burned down and his son disappeared the next morning. At the end of the note, we discover their last name is Navarro, meaning Lewis is either the man's son or a direct descendant. Okay, yeah, thank you for connecting those dots. I read those notes, but I wasn't sure who the tease was of like 
who this kid was who was being right. taken care of by his grandparent. Interesting. I guess yeah. that's Luis, yeah. Um, Brett says, Leon's reaction when you first come across the parasite head, Plaga is exactly what I was thinking. Perfect, says Brett. Yeah, I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I'm sure it's something along the lines of, you've got to be kidding me. Um, and then Brett, oh, are we at this part? Going, well, you get Ashley. We should mention this, right? Which, by the way, that was like, uh, the, the house part near the end I struggled with, and then the first time I got Ashley, like, I was getting my butt kicked, like, yeah. pretty quickly to the point where I was like, Ashley probably just thinks I am, like, the most useless, like, secret agent that they could have sent because <laughs> I'm like, you trust me? And she jumps out the window, and then we walk out in the courtyard, and I'm just, like, getting absolutely demolished by everybody, and she's got picked up, like, four times. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell that, you. That was a weird one because they wanted you to run there. Right. And that like, was, oh, really? That's what okay. they want you to run because I... I did Ram, because they they want they want to teach you like the close far situation, mm -hmm. and that's when like the moving and shooting at the same time really comes into play. Because literally all you had to do was like get Ashley next to you and like just book it, and then just shoot people to like stagger them out of the way. See this, yeah, this is probably where my knowledge of the original hurt me because I was like, oh well, there'll be that that. Uh wagon there that i can shoot to like take out a ton of them so i'll take out these couple guys and i'll go there so that was right. i should have just because i think the tutorial even shows cutscene like video of them running right yeah mm -hmm. so I in, yeah, like, I ran, you I ran can run yeah and there's so many of those people yeah through the graveyard and stuff i, I you mean, came out of the church because i tried i tried to run i failed and then i was like okay maybe one by one and then they just kept coming and i was like you know what i was more successful when i just ran <laughs> yeah the uh the Ashley specific controls of like tighter and looser that those are new. Yes. Okay, Sarah, you squinted really hard. Well, you could like tell her to go places. You right. know, you could be like, "Wait, Ashley," and then you could tell her to stop. Like it was kind of like more of like a sit, stay, follow okay. situation, okay. and now it's like a hang back, take care of yourself, or run next to me. Gotcha. So, I just I, like I, that you don't have to worry about her health anymore. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love. I, I love that. the simplification I never gave of her near and far. Item. And it's like, yeah, it's like I don't want to give you any herb. Like, what are you doing? Like, come on, this is for me. Right. <laughs> right. Freeloader. Yeah. Now it's just kind of, it's back to just feeling like Yoshi's Island. Of like, all right, maybe Mario's getting carried away for a little bit. Just got to go yeah, shoot a leg fun. out. Yeah, it's no problem. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Max says escorting Ashley was much less frustrating than I thought it would be. And McDoot says, escorting Ashley was about as frustrating as I remember it being. So there you go. Uh, Starkiller writes and says, can Sarah please explain what a squirt is? Yeah, so I saw, I'm really into Ashley's new look. Oh, okay. And I saw, I saw her skirt and I was like, hmm, that looks familiar. Like, I wonder, like, is she wearing a squirt? Like, because that's kind of like a relic of like 2004, okay. early 2000s. And I like walk behind her, and a skirt is basically a skirt in the front and shorts in the back. Oh, okay. so she's wearing mm -hmm. she's wearing shorts, but it looks like a wrap skirt in the front. And I was just, so, I'm so proud of the devs for putting <laughs> Ashley in a skirt. It makes so much more sense, and it looks amazing. Well, it makes the entire game a skirt mission. Mm-hmm. Hey, Porn Curly writes in and says, uh, "I always appreciate when games have contextual dialogue tracks." If you're crouching and give Ashley a command, Leon will whisper it. And if you're standing, it's a normal voice. The only other game That's I can cool. think of that has this is Spider-Man. It does feel nice when you're kind of crouching around just to have a little bit of that whispered tone. Which, by the way, the um, the stealth angle, I feel like I'm kind of just role-playing stealthy Leon more than it's actually practical. Of like sneaking around, you know, knifing people in the back. There's a couple sections where it feels like they want me to do it, but... Mm -hmm. Is, it, is this efficient? Is this actually as much of a stealth game as they want us to believe it is? Okay. I mean, I just like picking off one or two before yeah. before things get rolling is kind of like how I approach it. It's it's fun to just, you know, like I, it, once things go awry, it's fine, you know, but it's nice to be able to take out a few before it all hit, becomes chaos. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it seems like there there have been a couple times where, there's a guy, there's, there will be a guy who's standing there just waiting and looking for you. And there have been alternate ways around or like you take a ladder down into, you know, the tunnel, I think underneath the church and you can pop up on the other side. And so they, they sometimes give you ways 
to get behind enemies, but yeah, it's it 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 works when it works, but it's not a it's not a you're not gonna do like a full stealth run. Right, right. Of it. Uh JKK411 says, I'm loving the game so far, but I do wonder whether they have missed an opportunity to make me care about the Leon and Ashley relationship more. Throughout chapter six, uh through chapter six, I feel like they've barely even spoken to one another. It is Be sure they're a little busy. Well, well <laughs> I think they she can has find asked time. Leon. Like I was like even kind of annoyed by it. She has asked Leon very straightforward questions that have answers that he could absolutely share. <laughs> and he just it, totally ignores her. Right. And it's like, come on, man. Like <laughs> she's she I bet she's a, more stressed out than you are, Leon. Like, <laughs> like, why don't you like give her throw her a bone, like talk to her, like let her know what's happening. And it doesn't. And, you know, obviously that's like the sort of the narrative conceit. But even in the you know, it, it costs money to have actors say things like to have him just like have a couple words as opposed yeah. to totally ignore her is like, come on, man, let's, let's do that. Let's have him talk to her again. I think it's just narratively. They wanted to stay so close to the original. And I feel like if anybody else was remaking this game, that'd be priority one is like, well, okay. They're quote unquote meet cute. Like it ha- has to have a little heart. You have to care a little bit more about her than just eh, some baby Eagle hide in the locker, please. And I understand that, story is going to grow more in that direction. But like the closest thing so far they've had to bonding is like Leon where he's like, Hey, I bet you're pretty used to creeps chasing you. That was such a weird line. (laughs) It's really weird. I don't know if they were trying to tease like the very tall man who was about to chase you. Right. Right. But I was like, what a weird thing to say in this situation. (laughs) Well, to be fair, actually, I mean, she says like, was that supposed to be flattering? Like she had some response that seems like she wasn't just, Oh, Leon. Look, Leon's a broken man. Let me come to his defense immediately now after complaining about him. That's right. Kyle doesn't know how to talk to people anymore. There's the cute scene where like sh- the the building's burning and she's like Leon the building's on fire you should get out and then he rolls out and she like pats out the flame yep, on him. Yeah, that's right. That was a little something. I like. I was like, she's helping. She's helping me. <laughs> that's right. We Does you say something like you're welcome or something like that? I think I forget. I don't remember. Her. I just like I liked how she really like cutely just like patted out the flame on his back. That's right. She busted that window. Uh, in in mine in mine she said it like five times because I was like no I'm picking up every coin and every piece of ammo in here and she's like it's burning it's gonna fall down yeah I'll I'll Can't come pick out up in a this second. eyeball until I get all the yep. ammo Ashley that's right it, eyeball comes last uh, Brett says uh, chapter five the biggest scare in the game for me so far was that tower collapsing when you head back to the village it got a good jump from me that was cool yeah that was that was cool and was that in the original. Going back to the village for the and the tower collapse in there specifically. I don't remember. Okay. I want to say yes, but maybe it wasn't just as dramatic. Right, and then a but bunch maybe of, also no. A bunch of devil dogs <laughs> come jumping out of that thing. Then um, it is God. Do you want to hear something embarrassing? Going through the village the first time, there was that icon next to the house of like basically, hey, you need someone on your shoulders to get up to this area. And I saw that and I was like, what is that? What is that icon? I don't understand what it was. Like the first time going through that village, it's like, God, I forgot. Forgot how much of this game you're with somebody else. I was just two in the zone. Uh, Spencer Botine says, during the escort through the village, Ashley was down next to the cow in the barn. You can light on fire in chapter one. After the fight, I went to get her back up, but the cow headbutted me to cancel out the action. I tried again, but the same thing happened. It's obvious this cow had some beef with me, so I left... I was left with no choice. I unloaded my clip straight into its skull and successfully rescued the president's daughter from its evil clutches. Long story short, short, don't feel bad about the farm animals. It's obvious they're in league with Las Plagas. There we go. We can all feel good. They're uh, pure evil. That's probably more traumatic than the monsters chasing you guys. It's like, mm-hmm. actually, I gotta mm-hmm. murder this harmless cow. <laughs> next to you. What's wrong uh, with you, Leon? Are you a broken man? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Non-binary bomb writes in on Patreon. They say, one of my favorite parts of the original game was the house invasion. But here in the remake, I feel like that sequence has less tension than before. The atmosphere in this version was incredible with the sound design and new soundtrack making my head ring in the best way possible. But the way enemies filed in from all sides and chased Lewis and I in circles felt haphazard in a way that was exploitable. Whereas the original version made me feel truly overwhelmed and under siege. I wonder how much of this has to do with changes to enemy AI versus conscious design choices. Or maybe I'm the only one to feel this way. Well, Sarah, you said you had a no. tough time with it. Did, it. did it feel as stressful as you remember it in the original? I had an issue where I went outside the house to push a ladder down and I couldn't get back in because the door oh. was full of the zombie people. And I was like, 
Wait, can you can like move, please. You can leave like, the house. I kept getting like pinned in specific areas. Um, huh. I don't know. I really didn't like it, and then like the the cow headed man really took a lot out of me. Okay. <laughs> Luis had to keep like throwing ammo at me, but like he wasn't shooting. Oh really? Like he would just be standing there, and there'd just be a, a like a zombie there, and I'd be like, Luis, like, are you gonna help? And he'd yeah. be like, You should get over here. Huh? Help. Yeah, I don't know. Like it was, it's such an iconic thing from that first game. I, I cur- I'm curious as well. Like people that are playing it for the first time, if it felt really impactful. Um, but it's like, oh, this, that was a cool section. But I, I don't think it wowed me. Yeah, I I really liked that one and kind of hit my stride of not just being completely overwhelmed and freaked out during that one I, I like how it how like halfway through it, it transitions to the to upstairs right I that was right. super cool yeah and it's like we gotta get upstairs now uh yeah it, that one that one i probably it was probably a little easier than it should have been on on the easier mode yeah uh i could have sweat a little more during that one but um gotcha but uh, still very fun sweet uh, chapter six opens with uh, yeah, Luis talking to Ada, and he's and she's like, "Well, you get me that amber, and I'll get you out of here." And he's like, "Oh, please, uh, I'll get you the amber, okay." And that's their big I, discussion. I I really like Ada's voice. Really, but I guess some people don't, and I, I guess it's different than Resident Evil Two. They have a different actor. Oh, is that right? I don't know. I I could be wrong, but I I something about it felt much more natural to me. I don't know. I don't know who the performer is, but I, it really stuck out to me. as something I liked because I think it was a little unexpected. I don't know. Yeah. Uncharted Wolf writes in, they say, what are y'all's thoughts on Leon's voice actor compared to the original game? Call me a boomer, but the level of cheesy dialogue isn't nearly as memorable as the original. I got so excited to hear the bingo line only to realize it doesn't have anywhere near the level of charm as the original. I mean, I don't, is there an uproar online about them changing Leon's voice? Like, I didn't even notice. You could have told me it was the same or it wasn't the same. It's I, I, I don't know. It's not same. that. Yeah. Of all the iconic things of Resident Evil 4, I don't think that Dweeb's voice is high up on my list. I'm but like looking up who it even is now at this point. No one knows. No one's taking credit for it. It's really weird. <laughs> um, Nugget writes in and they say, my absolute favorite part of the remake so far was the entrance of the Chainsaw Sisters in the quarry. In the original game, fighting them was an optional encounter right after the cabin fight, so I always avoided them and took the easier route because I'm a coward. Uh, once it became clear that there was only one path after the cabin and the remake, though, I knew they'd be right around the corner, seeing their chainsaws bust through the wall and Leon backflipping to avoid them and then saying something stupid like, sorry, I'm a one lady kind of guy, was perfect in the cheesiest way and I loved it. See, Sarah, not only is he a hunk, but he's a classy guy. He only dates that's, one That's what I'm time. trying to say. What a polite young man. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that scene freaking killed me. If you're standing next to a wall and two chainsaws come through it, and your way to get away from that wall is to walk up to it and kick off of the wall to do a backflip. Get your feet <laughs> further away from the chainsaw, you maniac. But he's going to do what he wants to do. Um, let's see. Uh... Oh, uh, mm, sorry, I don't have the name for this person. Uh, saying, I don't think this is a this game does a good job of telling you what is or isn't killable. I ran around from the sisters, not knowing they could be killed, thinking it was more like the original Chainsaw Boy or the priest. I then paused to fight, paused the fight to look up how to get the stupid crank. Spoilers: the answer was it's a lot of bullets. You just have to keep shooting them. Is there? No, no. This sounds like a you issue. I think everything's killable. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't, except for, even Mendez, like, you only, he's maybe the only one in the sequence where yeah. you have to run from him. Right, I okay. I think that's but, new too, right? The running from him? I don't remember having don't remember to do that, that in the all. original. Yeah. Mm. I do, whenever Leon shoots Mendez in the cutscene, which I think is later, I'm like, stop. Like, Those are my you're bullets. wasting my bullets. <laughs> you're <laughs> wasting my bullets. You I can't hope, kill this man. I hope they would account for that. I think that'd be a that'd really be cool no! touch. No! I think it'd be fun, just like if he has a couple shots, you know? It's worth it yeah. for that for the connection. Not my bullets. <laughs> borrow somebody else. Borrow Ashley's bullets. I will say the chainsaw encounter is a lot more... Because in the original, what you do is you kind of, like, crawl into this gladiator pit. And the chainsaw women, like, burst in from the sides. Okay. And obviously mm. the first thing you have to do is crawl out of the pit mm. with the two chainsaw ladies. And then you just kind of, like, run around the upper level with them following you. So this one was nice because I was kind of, like, waiting for the, I was looking for the pit. I was Because I did this in the first 
time I played this and I did I was looking forward to not making this choice this time. I was literally like, okay, this time I'm not gonna do the two chainsaw grannies. Right. And the game was like, you know what? That's too bad because we actually don't give you a choice anymore, which I think was good. I think the two choices kind of weird. That was the only time I think you actually made a choice in the game for what you wanted to fight. Huh. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, like a weird decision, but I do like the changes they made. They they were hard to kill, but you just run in your little circle. That's yeah. it. That's yeah, that was where a lot of my grenades went, I think, was during that one. Yeah. Uh, and then you got the big Mendez boss fight. He crawls into that barn, and <laughs> Leon throws the barrel at him and takes care of him, no problem. And the, that transformation is so fast. He's just like a tall guy, and then the barrel explodes, yeah. and it's like, bah, now I'm a crazy tall scorpion skeleton guy from I mean, hell. I, I feel like in the original, he, I mean, he had a whole sequence. Is that right? He, okay. I, it was sped the so. hell up. And I kind of liked that. If I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. Like, if I'm right, and that, like, the original was just, like, a lot of camera changes of him, like, growing and stuff. Right. kind of like, it was like, no, F that. Like, this guy's huge, and you're going to fight him right now, so good luck. You know? Right, right. And go. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> and, what'd you think of the Mendez fight? Um, I sucked at it, and I think that's, that really, that really drove home, like, I don't understand, I do I'm just not getting the parry system of, or if, if, if it's like even possible when he's throwing those burning, um, two by fours. Yeah. It was tough to dodge those. Yeah. Oh, I just ran yeah. back and forth. Yeah. Like, that's what I, that's yeah. what I started doing after that. But even when he would come in, I don't know. I don't know if you were supposed to be able to parry any of that, but I was not, um, but, it, but it's fun shooting him and then jumping from the second level yes. down onto him to, uh, stab him. Yeah, Zach. It was, it was much more shooting gallery uh, than I remember. I remember, right. like the original, I remember running around and having to get away from him and stuff. But this kind of sets you up in like two zones. Yes. Kind of, almost, yep. Which I, I liked. I thought it was fun. I should be doing this more often. But yeah, I went back and looked at that original. Yeah, it was more just like, oh, kind of run around the full barn. But this kind of felt just like, okay, you have one little square. You can climb up and have the upper railing. Oh, and that's shooting it. the barrels out of his hands. I like, like that. Mm -hmm. That was okay. fast. It was a good good turn there. I felt it was going to be like, eh, maybe two of the barrels he'll be down. But there's a lot of shooting those barrels out of his hands. He just kept picking them up. He really wasn't learning his lesson. Uh, Zach McMahon says, I love when It'll games... This time. <laughs> I love when games reward the kind of weird but likely things players do. For example, in the boss fight, okay, I downed the boss. Oh, melee prompt. Let me try to... Oh, hey, Leon, yeah, jump down with that knife. It's the little things like this that make the Resident Evil games and the remakes so awesome. Plus, obviously, that boss fight didn't get the memo that the under Undertaker's gimmick was already taken. <laughs> Well, it's a sorry. Thing, right? Yeah, Kyle, it's a wrestling okay. joke. Ask Marcus Stewart about it. I think it'll be okay. really good. Uh, this game is basically the new WWE game, I think. Um, and that's it. Yeah, Ashley puts out your fire, and then they go into the castle, and then the drawbridge goes. I, I am surprised we're at the castle already. Like it, it feels like we're flying. In my mind, like that's kind of later Resident Evil Four stuff. But I think there's a lot of Resident Evil Four that I forgot about. Like there's whole locations that even. When talking about the remake of Resident Evil 4, a lot of people are like, oh, are they going to trim up this section, yada, yada, yada? And I don't even remember what that looks like. And so I'm excited to encounter all these things again because the castle is still super memorable for me. Um, remember when they announced they were doing, or I guess at first leak, they are doing the Resident Evil 4 remake? And God help us if we also had the same reaction on the Mid-Mac Show podcast. But remember how everybody, was, it seemed like their hot take was like, why remake that? It doesn't need a remake. What's the point? And now it seems like it's out and it's universally loved. Am I, am I misconstruing how I, this has gone? I, you are correct. I don't necessarily not feel that way, if that makes sense. Hmm. Right? Like, I I still would have taken a Code Veronica remake yep. over this. Okay. Um, and, like, I'm loving this. It's fun. But, like, it does. I mean, the original is still so good. I don't know. And, and like, I don't know. It's such a weird thing where it's like, this is this is great, but also like, I don't know if it's justifying its existence quite yet. But I'm still have, but I'm having such a good time with it that it's like it feels uh, inaccurate to say that. Yeah, I mean, which remake has justified its existence in your mind? Uh, a two, because okay, it was like sure. a radical sure. sort of re like taking a like that was a huge change, you know, to to what the two the format of two was, and and three to maybe a lesser degree. Um, and then one, I think, I feel like even with the visual upgrade was like totally undeniable. But um, 
this one there's a there's a smaller gap between the, the original and this one than there are the, yeah. the, the previous remakes i think yeah but like yeah i'm still having a fantastic time i'm, I'm excited fun. to keep playing after this oh boy uh we have a bunch of random comments that people submit over on patreon you ready to fly through these or soak them in and enjoy them because we appreciate their support. Uh, Hayden H. writes in and says, If Leon reloads a handgun without fully emptying the magazine, it will, just like in real life, end up with an extra round of the chamber. This is denoted by the plus one under the ammo counter. Plus, now when Leon draws a handgun, he does a press check to peek into the chamber and verify a loaded round. He's a pro, and I guess wow. that's why they sent him after Ashley alone. Cool. Good details. Cool I didn't know what that plus one meant. I was yeah. I also mm -hmm. was confused about that, but there we go. Um, Alex Britt writes in and says, while the original had good reload animations, I feel like the remake takes it a, a step even further. Each motion and click feeling so solid. The overall sound design is fantastic, straining the ears for the telltale creak of the Salazar statues and treasure lanterns, as well as a satisfying clunk omph when attaching the attaché click case. Says Alex Britt. Yeah, th I, I am so excited to upgrade my reload speed that's like when i think of upgrading my reload speed in any game i always think of resident evil 4 because like by the end of the game it's just, like, it's just the fastest thing and it's so satisfying to go from the baseline to that uh liam harvey can we quickly pay lip service to how satisfying it is to break open boxes with the knife sure it's nice to have the extra option to tap x for a contextual sweep kick elbow smash but given the choice i will always swing that knife around both the L1 and R2 pointed stab and R2 wide slash have this incredible sound design and game feel. Loot is a main pillar of RE4 and part of why it's so absorbing for me uh, is these hypnotic violent knife swings. They're so good. I that guess, that, I that doesn't use knife juice if you do that? I don't know. Even if it does, like I assume we all have enough money that it's getting the it. knife repaired, like it's not that big of a deal. Uh, Brady G says, I didn't love the new merchant at first, but he's grown on me for sure. And he's always entertaining to listen to. From chastising you for not buying anything if you exit without making a purchase to his great quotes, fun rhymes with gun. I'm very charmed by him, says Brady. He's very chatty now. Like, I'm just trying to look at the wares and he's like, dubber, 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 and I'm like, shh, shh, shh. Yeah. I'm trying to compare these two guns. What are you talking about? It, it He's does... got no one else. You're his only That's customer. That's true. That's so. true. Right. It does feel just like a completely different character at this point, but you know what? That's fine. To call him a character in the other one is maybe a stretch, but he's I was just... about to say, I was like, boy, was he a, a deep character. In the original. But he was fun. Uh, Spencer was. Smith says, does anybody else find the two movement speeds a little odd? Maybe it's because of how I tend okay. to role play my characters, but I don't like to run everywhere, even if it's more efficient. It never feels like this man is bothered. Like, the walk is such an unbothered walk, and, like, his run is just kind of, like, a little jog. And I'm like, hello, I'm running for my life. And he's just like, <laughs> and I'm like, could we pick up the pace? Mm -hmm. Can never do it right. Um, Drake H. By the way, Sarah, when I think of, like, survival horror, walk and run, now I just think of you because of that <laughs> video you made, and then everybody in the... Discord just made a gif out of it immediately of you doing the walking and running mm -hmm. animation. So I've seen you do that comparison. Because there's just walking, but like plus two speed. Like it's not right. faster than right. walking. Uh, Drake H says, I've been loving the game, but there is one change that shocked me. Upgrading the capacity on a weapon no longer fills the magazine. It Made me sad. It doesn't seem like a big change, but this really changes the meta. I used to enjoy the strategy of deciding whether to reload a weapon or hold off because of the merchant can't be too far ahead. I'm still restraining my brain as I start my new game plus. That's it. You notice that too, Sarah? Well, I was wondering about it because I knew that sometimes if I knew I was going to go into a boss, I would instead of like, I would put money into getting, you know, the bigger clip because I knew that I was going to get my free ammo. Right. Um, especially if you were like out, out. But I don't know. I'm. It's not too bad because I, I think they also changed the prices a little bit. Things seem a little bit more reasonable. Do like, they have the with discounts? The mini side quests, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Do they have like the discounts and stuff? No. Okay. Uh, he wasn't running any bogos. <laughs> Michael L. Kyle, you're about to explode. Oh no 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 not at all. I, you were talking about discounts, and uh, we were talking earlier about Jeff from starting with the uh, the case that give you like I, apparently that's pre order bonuses and like the collector's edition and stuff like that. Hmm. I didn't get the pre-order. Well, I didn't pre-order it or anything. Did you get the most expensive okay. edition because you were expensing it? No. Well, then I'm no, confused. I got, I, got the normal, I got the normal one, Hanson. <laughs> well, Capcom didn't send us codes, so uh, it's confusing. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Okay. You can expense it, Sarah. Send me a bill. 
Uh, Michael L says, I don't know well, if this I'll just is. Send you a bill? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how you respond to what Michael L has to say. Uh, okay. I don't know if this is how it was in the original RE4. Uh, it's been more than 10 years since I've played it, but I'm put off by the fact that you can only store away weapons, but not other resources like ammo and health items. Mm. Other Resident Evil games First didn't all, limit you this way. I didn't know you could store weapons. I, I've never done it. You couldn't. I, 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 I'm almost certain you couldn't in the original. Yeah. Okay. No, what do you mean? Right. Everyone's like, oh, I, yeah, I you store can. my gun away. And I'm like, where? The case is only so big. Yeah, you, you couldn't do it. I, I had the same reaction, um, and then I read a, uh, a page on Reddit that basically told me and the person who originally posted it that we're idiots, uh -huh. that we should be grateful because you couldn't even, that it's basically just for weapons and you, that you didn't have that option in the original one and that you have to figure out what you should sell or what should, you should hold on to, and that's part of the game. So, But you can put first aid sprays um, in there. Okay. That's where right. you can. It's, oh, okay. It, it's just guns and first aid sprays. Hmm. That's so, I don't know, that's weird, because I thought that the point was to kind of, like, manage the inventory. I'm more upset about this than the whole, like, auto-organize, because normally I would, like, when a new gun would go on sale that would use a similar ammo, I would compare and then sell the one that I thought right. was worse. So it's, like, it's weird that you can store them. What do you need, like, a worse gun for? Well, I guess in theory this means I can just buy the rocket launcher now. And just leave and it and then there. store it, right? Yeah, well, I guess yeah. I mean that boss fight. The, huh. Right. The my my only hesitation with what you're saying, Sarah, is that there's so many different types of guns mm -hmm. of like because I have true. the I, bet... I use the shotgun and the yeah. red nine. I haven't even bought the rifle or the SMG just because I don't have the space for it, and mm -hmm. and apparently they're not winning me over by giving me storage. Uh, to put it in either. Yeah, because like I didn't buy the bolt one because I was like, I don't have space for that. Like yeah. I don't want this. I I have my pistol, my shotgun, my sniper. Like I don't want anything else. Yeah. Uh Charles writes in and says, We gotta introduce Ashley to a treadmill after this whole ordeal is over, because she's out of breath every step that we take. <laughs> she is a heavy breather. Uh there's a lot going on back there. I, I don't exactly understand what's happening with her, but I, I wish her all the best. Uh, Deza Watts writes in and says, I appreciate how much the game encourages you to revisit old areas through new paths and objectives so that it feels a bit more like a traditional Resident Evil game. It's also neat how persistent those areas are. Bodies and pickups will hang around for hours as long as a set piece doesn't reset the environment. It took me some time to adjust since the money drops disintegrated in under a minute in the original game. Yeah, that stuff is always sitting around. I'll go back through so many areas and be like, what? How did I miss this before? I can't believe it's still sitting there. But it's awesome that Apple point out uh, certain nice. things that you yeah. missed. Uh, uh, like, yeah, I was really surprised by how much the map was pointing me, like, especially in the boat. It was like, hey, go over here and you can pick up, like, a gem on the shore. And it's just showing me exactly where it was. Where it's like, oh, geez, I didn't even... Did I walk right by it? And that's when they start to cue me in? I don't know exactly when it'll just pop up on there. But it must be a proximity thing or something. Maybe. Right? Uh, Dane writes in on Patreon and they said, I'd like to highlight three specific pieces of music. The typewriter music, the merchant music, and the end chapter music. One of my favorite recurring elements of the Resident Evil franchise is the use of a calm and soothing music in safe rooms to help relieve some of the tension built up by the combat and horror. These three pieces do a great job of helping you sit back, relax, and resupply before getting back to the action. I'm playing in hardcore and those small breaks are much appreciated. The original Resident Evil 4 had great music and the remake lives up to its predecessor, says Dane. Yeah, that's one of those things I don't really, I don't think I've ever really thought about. It's just like, oh, of course, it has Resident Evil has great save room music, but it's like, oh no, no, they're specifically designed to be as calming as possible to keep you. You, you engaged. almost save too fast because you don't really get a chance to listen to it. You know, like right. the older games, the typewriter would have to type out the save and the, you know all that stuff. Right, right. Uh, let's see, uh, Barrett Boswell. AKA Eret Ballswell that Ben called me on the Final Fantasy VII Remake Game Club. I'm sorry, Barrett. So uh, Barrett Ballswell writes and says, I want to applaud this game for continuing the series' model viewing section under the bonus option at the main menu. I really enjoyed these remakes, giving me the chance to appreciate the character models the developers put time into. I know the Arkham games did it, but I wish more games would follow Resident Evil's lead and give us the ability to appreciate their handiwork. Hell yeah. I gotta go back to yeah, that. Yeah, I went check and unlocked Hunnigan because I was like... Never seen her full character model. What does right, Hunnigan look like? Right. You know? She's it got was... some nice slacks and some good shoes. You know, Nice slacks. All right. Way to go, Hunnigan. Rooting for you. 
Uh, let's see. Wawa says, this is my first time playing Resident Evil 4. Although I've seen a friend play the beginning of the original, I can really see how Resident Evil 8 paid homage to this game with the village and the swamp area. A group of yeah. friends and I are playing together, passing the controller when somebody dies. It's been our tradition since the Resident Evil 2 remake. Also, that suplex is so satisfying. Oh, also, they made Leon less cute. All right, so on Kyle's camp there, says Wawa. Um, the, it is <laughs> weird. They're obviously not looking where I'm looking. In his eyes and his bulging <laughs> arm muscle chains. Um, it is weird to think about, like, oh, that opening village fight is so iconic that it kind of is the reason they went with the name Village and so much of Resident Evil 8 is based on that. It's, it's a it is the most thing. absurd one after 4. I think 4 still trumps it, but in terms of absurdity, mm -hmm. I think Village is right after it. It's like, what if Disneyland, but it was really scary? <laughs> right, right. Good game. <laughs> also yeah. werewolves. Uh, mm -hmm. Hunter Sachs says, my grandfather is the person that got me into video games and we played the original Resident Evil 4 when it came out. It holds a special place in my memory. My dumb kid brain wouldn't have gotten through it without his help. Revisiting it in the remake has been emotional, but I think he'll help me get through it one more time. That's very sweet, Hunter. Can you imagine playing this game with your grandpa? Wouldn't that be cool? I wish my grandpa played Resident Evil 4 with me. Uh, rest in peace, Gramps. Uh, jo <laughs> <laughs> Joe Kepchinski says, When Resident Evil 4 first came out, my wife went on a business trip that day, and I hunkered down and blasted through the whole thing in three days, raving about it whenever we talked. We immediately replayed it when she got home. Cut to 2023. My wife has been diagnosed and is currently undergoing chemo and proton therapy for esophageal cancer. Still, we had March 24th circled. We've only been able to get a couple chapters in so far, but it was a true spot of joy in an otherwise fearful time, says Joe. That's, That's an amazing yeah. story. And it's not a joyful game, so I'm glad you guys are finding that sort of respite in that, you know? That's, yeah. yeah. Good luck with all of that. I, I hope it all works out. May your entire life be like a save room. Yeah, right. Uh, a lot of people are playing this for the first time. A lot of people, like, played it with their partners years ago. Uh, it seems like a big partner game. It's really interesting. Like, boyfriends and girlfriends, everyone's all over the map for, like, oh, they, they turned me on to this. It's just when a game sells as many copies as Resident Evil 4, everybody has some different entry point onto this thing, you know? Uh, anything we missed, Jeffum? I don't think so. Um, I'm just, I'm, I, as I said, I've really been enjoying it and I, I appreciate how much it has moved the story along and the, the way that they'll just like, like I said, with the, um, with the giant spider guy, I'm, I'm glad to just have him in the rear view mirror of like, we introduced yes. this. He seems like he's going to be hanging around the entire game. And it's just kind of, nope, you're done with that. You're done with the village. We're moving on to a completely new place that I know very little about. So I'm looking forward to the next chapter. Yeah, it is. It is weird. I feel like most other games, like the beginning flows so well. It's like, this could be the whole game is just Leon in village-like environments. That would be good enough to be a 9 out of 10 back in and, 2005. And they just keep progressing so quickly. Yeah. And and just trying, I could see just trying to get to the president's daughter being like the entire thing. And it's like, oh, no, after, you know, a third of the game, he's like, I got baby eagle. Like, let's <laughs> get us out of here. And and it's it's just nice that it's that they it hasn't felt like they've been dragging things out. Right. Yeah, for sure. Sarah, do we miss anything? No, although when I started the game, I noticed that they had, like, the camera set to inverse, just, like, automatically. Really? Which is also one of the Ew. scariest things I've ever encountered. Oh, my God. On PC, inverted mouse? Yeah, I know! I could not believe it. That's really I odd. Think that's ridiculous, and I play inverted. Oh, disgusting. Uh, all right, that's it, everybody. We hope you enjoyed the first chunk of the Deepest cool, I Dive. I any final thoughts. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> well, Kyle... <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Just giving you a hard time. Hey, let's wow all... us, Kyle. Yeah, wow us, dude. Well, I don't can... have... <laughs> you better come up with something now, buddy. Uh, yeah. I took a note that after the Del Lago fight, when Leon looks into the water and sees his reflection, yeah. it looked kind of rough, like, because it was looking in the water. Yep. And I had a thought to myself that Leon was like, this is what I looked like in the GameCube version. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Hey, that was worth it. Thanks, man. No, that was worth it. That was worth it. Uh, Kyle, right. I'll always ask you for your final thoughts now. Uh... <laughs> I'm sure we missed some things. You're probably screaming, why don't they talk about this? Uh, again, that is your job to write in. Patreon.com slash minmax with two N's. Help support the Deepest Dive format. You don't see anybody else doing it uh, because it's a weird thing to do to spend this much time on one game. So we need your support to make this whole thing viable. Plus, we are literally 63 
new supporters on Patreon away from hitting our goal and making a documentary about all of our pets. Um, this this is the beauty of an independent outlet like MinMax is these numbers, they're not nothing to us. Every single person that supports The Deepest Dive uh, moves our needle. We reach out to them personally and message back and forth with them to figure out what they want from us in the future. Uh, and literally 63 people, I know there's more than 63 people watching right now, 63 people can elevate our, our entire outlet and create a cute documentary about pets. So if you enjoy this and you want to submit a comment or unlock the podcast version or help support the format, patreon.com slash minmax with two N's. We look forward to reading your comments. And again, we're collecting your comments on chapters 7 through 11 this Sunday, everybody. Even if you don't make it through chapter 11, um, still submit a comment based on what you played through. Uh, what, chapter 7, chapter 8, whatever you get through, submit a comment and there. Yes, just Kyle. to be totally clear, yeah. uh, beat chapter 11. Beat chapter right? 11. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so beat chapter 11, and that is Sunday, April 2nd. Patreon.com slash minmax 2 ends. That post will go up for you to submit your comment there. Uh, we'd appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching us record this live. Thanks, everybody, for unlocking the podcast version, all that fun stuff. Greatly appreciate it. I think that's it. We got a whole middle chunk of Resident Evil 4 to get through. Jeff, I'm ready for the frickin' castle, man. I'm not because I don't know what's in there. It's spooky and weird <laughs> and there's a lot of chanting. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Give my regards to your God. Bye. Did you know that you can more than double the amount of podcasts from MinMax every single week by supporting us at the $5 tier on Patreon? You don't have to listen through the browser or anything dumb like that. You'll get access to a private RSS feed if you support us on Patreon. You put it in your favorite podcast app and then bam, you can listen to our weekly bonus podcast party chat, the podcast version versions of the deepest dives, min-max interviews, max spoilers, and you get the min-max show podcast a day earlier than everybody else. So please help support independent games media. Head over to patreon.com slash min-max with two N's.